Yo, 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 Mallory Bros Podcast, episode 145. We locked in. Welcome to the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to my co-host right here. Um, <laughs> who is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what am what am I? Uh, what are we laughing? What, what was funny? Why, you, you never say that. I figure out what's funny. Uh, look, my <laughs> mood completely changed. Uh, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> I made the nigga nervous. Yeah. <laughs> Threw all this whole intro. Happy Friday. Um, oh, we got some good weather finally. I think we are like officially in spring. Y'all know for what a I week miss now. So I miss when we used to be real uh, hype about the the weeks, y'all. I miss the beginning of the podcast starting like, look, y'all see this? Y'all can y'all feel it? For my OG listeners, y'all don't feel listeners. how it's kind of like, y'all, y'all don't see how it's kind of dry without the music, without the energy. We just stop. That's like Terrell was like, better drop. I'm like, okay. We just honestly, we had I to get away from that music. I playing the music. I missed the, the energy and all y'all that. Y'all wasn't listening enough, y'all. Y'all want to watch the visual. Y'all might skip past the beginning and just get to the all right, first topic. I want somebody to leave a comment in the uh, comments and say, bring back the music. And if that joint gets over a certain amount of thumbs up, we bringing that shit back. And we're going to say, Spotify, come knock on my fucking door. <laughs> I'm looking to see if you get in. See if you get in. They don't even got to do that. They can get all your shit intellectually. Nah, no bullshit. That TikTok shit is real. Honestly, I didn't really. Yeah, I we don't know what like, terms and conditions we don't accept. We it. said, look, okay, they're going to try to steal information. Let's stop that. These motherfuckers can get a bunch of shit. <laughs> no bullshit. <laughs> And that's crazy. You can't go to court and be like, they put it in the terms and conditions. I hit okay, but I didn't know what I was. You can't say that. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? You definitely okay them to you own all of your shit. But um, the week was chill. It's been a busy week. Mm-hmm. Y'all will understand why this week has been so crazy after this weekend. Yeah, for like, real, it's not a busy week. I got a busy week too. I'm a busy man with a busy, you know, busy life, busy plans. So you know, I you know I take my time out of my, yeah, my day to, and I just kind of do what I do for for him, you know. You want him to? That's the worst person. Gotta make it look like you're busy. Yeah, I gotta look. I can have a busy day. You can have a chill day. You don't have yeah. to. You know, it's crazy because me. No, nah, we don't need that. It's crazy how busy I am. But the week has <laughs> been crazy. It's gonna be a uh, a little bit of a crazy weekend. I have not been getting good sleep. And I've been having crazy ass dreams. I had a dream, you know, full transparency, I had a dream last night that my first grade girlfriend was like on some I'm trying to get you back type shit, on some 2023 shit. Yes! And I'm like, it's been 20 years, like, okay, <laughs> weird as fuck. She look good, though? No! <laughs> he gotta say no. Nah, she looked like she looked in first grade. She, it was a first grader? I don't know if you, were, yeah, I don't know if you remember what my first grade girlfriend, what her life is like now. Okay. I mean, am, am I missing it? What the fuck is going on? The fuck it is going was on? Not, it was not the best. What you mean? What she? What her life is like now? What her life like? She is. Oh, like she's gay. She's a dom, yeah. So she's oh, like. Okay, that's cool. You I, you made it seem like she she's in a doing, wheelchair or some shit. Nah. You, could, you couldn't that say would, that she was gay now? You say that like people that are in a wheelchair aren't fine. No, I'm just are saying. Are you being you ableist? It seem like she's, she's like, you made it seem like something had happened to her. I'm sorry. Really? Pull up in a wheelchair? Uh, are you serious? <laughs> Look. <laughs> Terrence, I'm not laughing at that. I'm not laughing at that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry, laughing at that. And we probably should take that out. Because that's insane. To, <laughs> that's insane to say. That's exactly the problem. This is the problem. (laughs) This is the problem. Right here. Both need discipline. Find out where they work. (laughs) Get their jobs. Uh For themselves. (laughs) Not an issue. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, look. You had something you wanted to say to the uh, our younger audience, particularly the young gentlemen. I don't know why that just that was the funny shit. That was not funny. Go ahead. Then why was you laughing? <laughs> it's one of the things that's not supposed to be. <laughs> People do the ha, ha, ha. It's not funny. Because <laughs> they start real, realizing. Will you Smith. Ha, ha, ha. I'm going to go slap this man. <laughs> 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 All right, look. I have a question. It's not, I ain't, I ain't want to say nothing. I just got a question. And I told Terrell I was going to ask him on a podcast for my young niggas out there. Or brothers. Start off, my young fellas out there. The question that I have is, I know that the ski mask is like the, the new wave. And that's what a lot of people are doing and, and rocking it, you know. 
you see a lot of people wearing ski masks, and I'm not going to be the old dude that's like, why are you wearing a ski mask? I'm not doing that. I get it. Question is, though, are you wearing the ski mask for women, or are you wearing the ski mask for men? And I thought about that the other day. I'm like, me, myself, if I were to put on a ski mask, I'd just think about why I would be putting it on. And I said, okay, so if I'm going to put that joint on, why would I ever, like, put it on? Like, if I'm thinking about, all right, man, let me go get a ski mask. I'm thinking maybe if I was cold, but it don't be cold and you niggas be wearing it, Mm -hmm. you know? So I'm like, it's not really for the weather. I'm like, all right, maybe if I don't get the fresh cut, throw the ski mask on because my hair not cut. And I know y'all going to say that's the reason why. And I get that. I vibe with it. But, like, I've seen niggas with fresh ass cuts still wear the ski mask. So that's why I was like, damn. I would really only be wearing this if I felt like my regular outer shell wasn't comfortable. And if I felt like that, it'd be, be, it, it definitely has something to do with women. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If I feel like I'm looking rough, you throw the hat on. That's why Terrell got the spanky yeah, on the right spanky now. Spanky on right now. The spanky <laughs> on for this one. But that's you get it. Because, look, you're doing that for women. You're not putting a hat on because men. Well, what if you're doing it for yourself? That's bullshit. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you're doing anything for yourself. We live in a real world and a real reality over here. You don't do anything for yourself besides like Cause think shit about, like eating. You nah, know? Terrence. Nah, but you see that because that's what you did not wear this I'm hat. I'm taking a page out of the ladies' book. I'm doing it for me. I'm not doing it for anybody. We all know that. Think about this. This hat right here is because I don't have a haircut, right? Yeah. Y'all can see the beard is a little scrub. But when you cut your hair, who you do it for? So I do my when I cut my hair, it's for me. You cut your hair for you, or you cut your hair for women? Now you see, if you was going to this is what I say because I know what you. I know what I know where you going. And what I'll say is, you know what it is. You're you do it for you. for you, so that you can have better results. It's with. like you want me to tell you that you're doing. <laughs> but it. look at me. I'm. You want me to tell you that you're doing it for you, so that you feel better about you doing it for women. And but I'm think not about Terrence. Do that I don't cut my hair. You're doing for it for women, and we are moving. On. I've been in a relationship. Think, Terrence, think about this. I've been in a relationship going on what two two, two and change. Mm-hmm. So I'm not cutting my hair for. I'm going. Am I cutting my hair for her? Yes, you are. I mean, yeah, because you want to stay presentable, but I don't do it for her. I do it for me. <laughs> what am I cutting my hair for her? Yeah, you are. I mean, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? No, I'm doing it for me. You're, I have this hat on because I don't want myself to look crazy on the pod. I, I, you don't want yourself to look crazy for your girl. Uh, Terrence does not listen. No, nah, listen, Terrell, because this is my thing. If you knew that... You wrong. If you knew your girl wasn't going to see this or no girl and that it was just men, you wouldn't give a fuck. I, I would. Can barely get this nigga. Y'all see what he got on? I could barely get him to dress nice for the podcast. Y'all wonder the only reason why I wore this and didn't throw on my Gymshark sweater like I was getting ready to when I ran out the house this morning? Because I said, let me make sure I wear something semi-eye for the pod because Terrence will talk shit about how I don't dress up. I dress up and I'm ridiculed. I just want him to wear something other than a Gymshark sweater or outfit lease sweater. That's not no pass by shit. That's not no... We should be comfortable. You should know. You should look. I should be able should, to wear my checkered look. PJ Christmas. Uh, but you see why pajamas. he feel like doing that? Cause like he said, he been in a relationship for two years, had his girl, so he had the he got the comfortability to come up here. Cause he know he not really thinking about women looking at him. So that's why he dressed the way he do. But if he was to dress up, it would probably be more because it's you know that there's gonna be outside eyes. It's like the i.e. women. It's like the nigga that goes to the gym and. You, you got out of a relationship, so now you try and get your best physique and you try and look your best because you out of a relationship. I'm for still, the new one, though. For the new for one. For the next one, right. Yeah. I'm still that, but not... I just don't think certain shit is that shit. You have had... You have cut tents. As a somebody that cut your head, it's full transparency. Get your hands off me, nigga. Full transparency right here. And that's my new saying, full transparency. You've cut your hair before and mm-hmm. didn't like it. Mm-hmm. And you say, I'm wearing a hat. Fuck this. I'm gonna let this let this haircut that I just cut mm-hmm. grow back. Are you doing that? You don't like it. Yeah. Other people might not be able to tell. I said if I don't like it, then I'm not confident in it. Then that mean that so you she did, don't like it. So, so you put a hat on hat for on you just in case. for you. I'm putting the hat on to cover my insecurity. So that this motherfucker don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting my hat on for me. If you, I didn't care. Terrence, if I didn't care, I would just wear the hat. So, Terrence, everything you do is for girls. Nah, I'm That's just not true. If, I'm saying if we keep it in 100, a lot of the things we do. Like I said, you don't eat for women. You don't 
bathe for women. You don't do shit like brush your teeth for women, but you definitely do certain shit for girls. We definitely dress a certain way to be to impress. Yeah, you dress to impress for sure. So I do think it is ridiculous to say that you just don't do that at all. But I think primarily Terrell. people do it for their own self-esteem. Okay, bet. You know the women gonna take my side. I know y'all gonna try to run with this. Oh, people can actually do things for themselves. Nah, sure. They can. This is what I. We Go ahead. We're supposed to be talking about the ski mask. Now. Good. Now you're right though. People do do stuff for other people. Because that was the, this the main point. Are niggas wearing the ski mask for men or women? And I told Terrell, I think that they're wearing it for men. Yeah, not, not for men to... Not in a sexual way. Not in like way, a way, but, but almost to be look dangerous, I told him. They want to look tough. They want to yeah. put on this, this persona. And then they, they roll the dirty joint up right on their forehead, and you wonder why your forehead is breaking out. Yeah. You got that dirty rolled up joint on your forehead with a big bunch ball, and you haven't shaved. I've seen niggas work out in ski masks before. I've seen this, And then remember that was a thing? Work out in a mask. Remember in the pandemic, they was trying mm-hmm. to gas that. You know, actually working out with the with the mask on. Mm-hmm. Dun, 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 trying to talk now. to somebody with a mask on. Where they at dangerous. now? But like, you're right. Uh, the ski mask culture to me is is the ski mask culture is definitely it's worse than when we were growing up. Cause think about it, when we grew up, you were like like a hoodie made you dangerous. You know what I'm saying? R.I.P. Trayvon. A hood, the hoodie. Was made you dangerous, you know what I'm saying? But it was still on some that I mean, was fucked up type shit. Cause we were just wearing a hoodie. <laughs> These motherfuckers are wearing ski masks. I don't know if motherfuckers forget what ski masks are for. I didn't bring the ski mask up to get on some old nigga shit about them wearing ski masks. Terrell, Terrence, yes you did. No, I didn't. I just wanted to know if they was wearing it for men or women. And you know I what? was like, you know what? Some of the things that we do in this world, we do for women. Some things we do, we do for men. I think if I'm going to wear a ski mask, it's so I can look dangerous. It's so I can just walk up to, to, to you know, my mailbox. And then they can say, oh, fuck up. Hold up, y'all. Not that one. Because <laughs> he might have that on him. I applaud y'all. And I might. I got to applaud how honest you are about. You that. know? I'm wearing it. For Even me. if it I'm might be a little. I'm not going to wear this. I'm not wearing this for the choice. And I said, you know what? Me hating and saying, why these young niggas wearing ski masks? Why these young niggas wearing ski masks? I'm like, you know what? To stay dangerous, you could either question it or get with it. I just don't think, I honestly don't, I'm never going to co-sign and say it's all right. I think y'all look stupid as hell walking around. You just look like, walking around looking like a criminal. But if you do We it, never walked around looking like a criminal. We may it, have sagged our pants a little bit, but we never walked around in criminal attire. If you're doing it to stay safe and, and look dangerous and keep people out off your radar. How is that going to keep people? Ahead, rock, bro. So you're going to keep who off your radar? Uh, some people live, Ops. Nah, yeah. Some people live in areas where it's like, yo. What about the people that's doing it? If we this? see this Steve Harvey dressed ass nigga walking down the street, we're going to knock his head. We're going to hit his head, get his shit, take his shit off of him because look out. But look, if you was walking with the ski mask on, they say, hold up, hold up. Terrence, no, they wouldn't. No, this no, is the no, stupidest no. logic ever. That's, re- that's retarded. No, you no. niggas look dumb. I feel like I You look a criminal. I feel like I'm not off with the ski mask thing. I think I, I feel like I'm jolly like on. You jolly like off. And you smell like you just put on off, boy. You thought you was getting ready to be sitting next to some citronella candles outside Karen, like okay, shit, Okay, but you got on a deep This creek. nigga thought he was about to be around mosquitoes. He got the off spray. This nigga smelled just like some, uh... <laughs> you smell just like some off. Damn, it's hard to sit I right did, I do have an off. You know why? Because you look like a mosquito-like shit, boy. This nigga put the eye put the off on... You nat built. You thought you wasn't about to get bit. This nigga still out there getting toasted. <laughs> <laughs> that shit not even working. He got it all over his body. They still eating his ass up. Hey, did you see how they brought back the, uh, uh, did you see the, the, the drink that was on the TL, the drink that Granny used to give us for the mosquitoes? What, the citronella? Nah, it was like this clear, oily shit. What was that shit Granny used to give us for the mosquitoes? You put that on and that shit would like not like the mosquitoes wouldn't hit us. It came in like a clear. Oh, it wasn't all. Me, nah, it's not all. Was it a spray? What is it? Was it a? Good, it was good, like good, a. Good, good, it was good, like good. a. I would say it's like it a, was an oil. It was like an oil, but it come in a big ass bottle. The green joint. The green joint. Yeah. You yeah, know I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, yeah. That, mom had that, not Granny. Granny had that. That too. was that uh that Evian or something. You old as shit. You are old ass. Uh, you oh oh wow! Come on, y'all, y'all gotta help me with my cursing. 
oh, wow, I just remembered I'm not supposed to be cursing. Right, 20 minutes 20 into 20 the- minutes in. See if you can't curse no more for the rest of this joint. I'm going to try my best. But honestly, Ter- y'all, don't listen, Terrence. If you if you out there wearing a ski mask, just understand how you look. And you know what, Terrence? That actually brings up a good point. The uh, I'm not saying that you don't look stupid. You could the question look stupid, you but, asked, right? I mean, Let's just you stay know. here since we already here. Let, we might as well stay. The question you asked was, are you responsible for your perception? And this is a great jumping point from that. Because I think yes. <laughs> Terrence, please. Come on, bro. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what? Come on, bro. We do an I'm audio so podcast. Sorry. I'm so sorry. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I'm just, I just be saying shit that's funny as shit, and I'm not. I can't share it. It's like it's like whatever shit. We do an audio podcast. He just closed my computer on some administrator shit, boy. You look like you ready for early dismissal I'm about to so tap, you can go tap home your from work, boy. Right this way, boy. You look like a miniclip.com ass nigga, boy. Nigga ready to go home from work. Early dismissal? Bet. Let's you get playing these hot dogs. out of here. <laughs> Let's get these kids on. The, you playing the president fight joint with ready Bush to go versus to your... Kerry from 16 years ago. This nigga ready to leave. Look like he ready to leave and go to Matchbox. Go get him a cigar. Meet with the guys. <laughs> <laughs> Pass that gutter. But yeah. Oh, uh, your own perception. Are you responsible for your own perception? Are you are you are you responsible for how the world perceives you? Now there's a big elephant called discrimination and racism in the room. Yeah. But outside of that, like when it comes to some of that stuff, like wearing a ski mask. Tell somebody get up and walk off this pod. No, go ahead, go ahead. On some no, no jumper shit. Go ahead, go ahead. Like wearing a ski mask. I'm getting up and leaving. No, you're not. See, when you do this, you, you, you they'll hit a door open and close. When somebody, if somebody were to read you wrong or think that you were on some shit that you're not, you have a responsibility in that. And you could easily use the ski mask situation as like a segue to it because you could be in a store somewhere that got robbed last night. Like say I was at a store last night that got robbed, right? Or broken into, right? Uh And I'm there off the late night and I got a ski mask on. Right. I can't necessarily like I, I could have not done anything, but I do also understand the the perception that could be out there with me having a ski mask on and being there late. And oh, shit, they got somebody broke into that drain last night. Damn. So like <clears throat> when the energy comes my way, when somebody says, well, we don't know where you was at. You had the ski mask on. It could be you. I'm not so throwed. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because it's like. Damn, like, there's a certain responsibility that I do have to take for how I look, which is the perception. Yeah. Even if it ain't true. That's why I'm like, I do think you can't just say, oh, that's how I look. Oh, you only saying that because of how I look. It's more so like a yeah. being understanding that, damn, I understand how it looks that way. Mm-hmm. So it'll be easier to move around that. Yep. Me being so taken aback by it, it's like, all right, you know. Mm-hmm. Racism is like the elephant in the room when it comes to perception. And the uh, sometimes the elephant in the room is the size of a of a a mouse, but yeah. it could still be there. But that's on like a grander scale. You know what I'm saying? Like there's always going to be people that are discriminating. There's always going to be racism. But not even just thinking about like the extremes, you could actually fuck up your perception in a relationship or in a environment with your peers to where yeah <clears throat> you know how you you ever see somebody that's tripping and everybody thinks they tripping and they're just so pissed off yo bro if everybody said that you know how everybody will be telling you you are wrong bro you're wrong bro you're wrong bro. <laughs> everybody and you're just you gotta stand like- back and just accept it you can't say fuck all of y'all you know what I'm saying? And look, you're not even accepting that you're wrong. You're just accepting that, okay, everyone thinks I'm wrong. So it's not, okay, I know I'm right. I'm going to figure mm-hmm. out how to prove everybody wrong. It's just like, all right, bet. Since everyone thinks that I'm wrong, maybe that's just what it is. Yeah. I've, been, I've been wrong in front of everybody until I'm right. I've been in a situation where I said, nah, y'all, we need to do this. And everybody's like, look, no, 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 nah, fuck that. We're not doing that, mm-hmm. right? You're wrong. But then once we do it and it works, now I'm right. Now you're right. So sometimes, I mean, sometimes that is, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. And then closing on that, 
responsibility is the most important thing. Because if you out here playing gangster, you responsible. You you are also responsible for that. If you on t- if you on a TL talking tough, yeah. and the right person run up on you based on your energy, and now you got to live up to that because that's the energy you put out. You're responsible for that. I think th- I just think the more you pay attention to like perception and stuff like that, then I think you're gonna j- put yourself in a better environment to survive. Yep. You know, if I'm wearing a ski mask or or if I'm looking a certain type of way and I'm in a certain area, then I can attract that energy just as much as I'm trying to push it away. Push That's it why away. it's high risk, high reward. That's been my thing right there. High risk, high reward. Jonathan Majors is somebody that we have been a fan of for a long time. And he finally started to reach like that public acclaim. We knew he was a great actor. Like mm-hmm. he just had finally started getting public acclaim. And literally, Boom. it might be all ruined at this point. Yeah. And it's been a week since the last time we had a pod. Yeah. And I feel like even the last pod, we were like, go see Creed 3, J Majors. Yeah. Yep. So, crazy twist, right? Yeah. So, basically, the day one, we get accusations of, you know, assault. Shorty had some marks on her neck or whatever that were consistent with strangulation, right? And, uh... Jonathan May just gets locked up. And the next day, we got a little bit of a uh, response from his camp. This didn't happen. He's, he's innocent. We have proof. And then, you know, they said they have a video that we haven't seen yet. There's the cab driver's testimony who said it didn't happen. But then these text messages come out the following day, and it just don't look good, man. It just don't look good. It looks like Stockholm Syndrome because she basically said, you're talking it's about my text fault. messages. Yeah. That the text messages that between them two. It don't look good. That, okay. It don't look good. And look, there is still, we don't still know everything. And I'm just saying is, it don't if look. He's saying that he didn't do anything. If he's saying he didn't put his hands on her. You looking at some text messages and say, oh, these text messages remind me of this situation where this. Terrence, no. I'm not saying that. And he never, we haven't heard from Jonathan like Majors yet. We heard from his camp that said he was, wasn't guilty of assault. They could have had a fight. What I'm saying is, this, and this is what I'm saying. I'm not saying that he's guilty, but I'm saying that based on that, it don't seem like it, he's going to be, I don't think he's going to face any jail time or anything like that. I don't think it was anything like that, but I do think they might have been in a little bit of a physical altercation, which never bodes well for the man. All I'm hearing, he said he ain't put his hands on her. Terrence, when did he say that? You haven't heard from Jonathan Majors. His camp said he didn't assault her. Right. If I assaulted her, then I put my hands on her. Right? Am I tripping? Yeah, but that text message, though, bro. The text message, especially the one where she said, Okay, you talking I told about what it was text my message looked like. But guess what? But she said, and this is what Jonathan Majors and them put out. So yeah. they looked at it. Yeah. She said, it was my fault. I told them it was my fault, and I shouldn't have grabbed your phone. And she said she passed out. How the hell did she pass out? Didn't Jonathan Majors the one that called the called the called the cops? He did. So when she say it's my fault, we don't think anything about that. He said he ain't hit her. He said I didn't assault her. But you looking at these text messages and you like, oh, this could be Doc on. She could be trying to cover up. Yeah, it don't look good for him. It, Not. It, I mean. It, I guess you, I mean, I mean, can now, we Terrence, really say it doesn't look good for him? Or, I mean, I guess. It doesn't look good in a court of. Don't we still, like, not know? I'm trying to eat these fruit snacks, y'all. So we're going to get in my nerves, but whatever. This is what, Terrence, you should have ate before. So, yeah, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> look, this is what I'll say. Uh, in a court of public opinion, right, he had already been publicly killed by everybody, mm-hmm. right? And we were saying, look, let's just wait and get the more information, right? Because we do this thing where we quick to kill somebody in the public and then new shit come out and we find out there was nothing wrong, a.k.a. Uh, I.E. Michael Irvin, what just happened. They kicked his ass off the whole Super Bowl shit over some bullshit Until that ended up not being true, yet. and now he's suing for $100 million. And Nate Parker, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There are examples of the other side, but that's why I was like, let's just wait. But with the text messages like that, I just don't think in the court of public opinion, the way people think if he's an abuser or not, it did, those text messages didn't say 
you didn't hit me. I lied about it, and I shouldn't have lied on some what happened to my man C Breezy shit with that girl. Yeah. But they this text message almost looked like he did hit you, but you trying to take up for it because you didn't want it to be this big thing, which it became. Okay, so watch this. It looks like that. Cool. I don't think that that means it looks bad for my man Jay Majors just because you have that perspective. There's other perspectives. What's the other perspective? Her saying my bad could be about the fact that this entire situation turned into this big situation that put his whole career in jeopardy. And she could have said, damn, my bad. I didn't mean for this shit to blow up like this. That's why she's pulling all her shit back. Because in situations like, like this where there are false accusations, you do pull your statements back or recant your statements. And you do say that you didn't mean it for none of this to happen. After you see what happens, that happens. That, that's mm -hmm. something that happens. Like, Devontae damn, Davis you know just went through that. I mean for mm -hmm. this reaction to happen. So, you know? Yeah. Now like, you, did you see the girl that that, had, that that got online and was like, she told everybody that her husband had cheated and they were calling to get him fired. And she had to get on there and be like, yo, we are one income house. Y'all yeah. can't get him fired. She I'm wasn't wrong, though. She just didn't want him to get fired. I, I saw that. Yeah, I don't think she was wrong. I'm just saying, once the world knows about everything, everybody has a public opinion, it's like, all right, that's kind of, it's like a, you know. And that's what I was saying. Yeah. It could come out that they had like a little, she was trying to get his phone from him, and he might have been like off some shit like that. And it could have not even been assault at all, because apparently the cab driver said that shit wasn't that at all. It wasn't that And there's video. Yeah. Jonathan made them put out these texts, though, that made it look like, you know what I'm saying? They made it look like that to people who are conspiracy theorists. Like nah, you. Terrence. Nah, it's not conspiracy, bro. Trust me. Oh, wow. Terrence, you need to go and read she the text. Y'all, Terrence didn't read the text. I read the text so out we loud. We just read the text together. You got to, like, like read it, though. We just read it. It literally just came out. We were recording on Thursday. It just happened. So if there's anything new, we didn't see it. All I'm going to say, you look like you work at a barbecue, boy. Fuck out of here. What do you look like, boy? You look like a piece of, piece of mulch. And you're not taking this serious. And you're taking a trash tape. I don't think I'm taking. You're not taking tape. it serious because that Stockholm is real. I'm not saying it's not real. All I'm saying is we don't know. You got on here. You said it's not looking good for Jay tape. Majors. Hold up, new information. This new information to me doesn't. I we don't know if that's Stockholm. Yeah, does it look like it? Yeah, but like, hold up. He said he ain't do it. I was one of the first people. You was just sitting here with me. We was both talking about it. Now you on the podcast saying something. We literally got different. the text on some breaking shit. And, you're and I said, what wow, looks this like. don't look good now because it looks like because of what she said. They said she had evidence of her recanting her statement. If that's it, that's not recanting. Recanting means this didn't happen. What she did wasn't a recantment. Recanting means I'm pulling back. Let's look at what up. I said. Not that, that, that this didn't happen. Recanting my statement means I'm changing what I said. Recant definition is to say that one no longer holds an opinion or belief. And an opinion is what I said. Right. It's not what I did. Yes, sir. To withdraw or with repudiate. An what opinion. she said. An opinion, though. What I said. Not to what I did. To withdraw or repudiate a statement or belief formally or publicly. An opinion. Okay. A belief. Right. But not something that I but, but, did. But, 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 but. She, what she did in that text message wasn't uh, recanting. She said, "I'm my bad that it blew up. I shouldn't have touched your phone. You shouldn't have touched your phone because what? Terrence, I shouldn't have touched your phone means what? You wouldn't have you what? You know how girls, you know how girls do that? Girls would be like, yeah, whatever. Give me my fucking phone. Grab your phone. And now you look. Give me my fucking phone, but Give me my phone. Terrence, you, you making look, this like a... And now it looked like we having an altercation... I'm not hitting you. I'm not doing anything. Look, I might be trying to get my phone back, and I'm like, look, give me my joints. phone. She had lacerations, though. She was on the, on, she had lacerations, Terrence. Let's just wait for the case to get solved, because I'm not doing wait. this Meg the Stye and Tory Lanez thing all over again. This is not that. I can admit that I am Joey Swole when it comes to Jonathan Majors. This man did nothing wrong. Terrence, you can't say that, though. And it's not funny because and we don't know. Because what if he really did? This the, tech, this the stance you want to take? There is a gang of people who are behind his accuser. 
why do I have to stand behind his accuser? Terrence, nobody's saying that. Who we just saying you need to be open. Has recanted her state. I'm 100. I've been. You just said he did nothing wrong. I, we don't know that. I'm, first of all, like I said, I'm playing. This entire time, Terrell, I've been open. You're the one who came on heavy handed saying Jonathan Major is not looking good for him. Bro has a bro has a, a a heavy case in front of him, but I don't think that them text messages incriminate him. I don't think them them text messages put him in a worse position. What do I you, think it fuels conspiracy. It fuels uh what if. You know what I'm saying? Y'all want us to believe what people say when they accuse, but now when she says that this isn't what happened, or now that she's starting to change up, now her word is faulty. You know what I'm saying? No, now we it looked like her or, she or her accusation, but now her word faulty when Jay may just come out and say, no, I didn't do that shit. That's bullshit. Now she comes out and says that, oh, yeah, it's because you told her to not say it. Okay, well, then you know what? Just give me my sentence now. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm guilty. There's nothing. If, if she can't come out and clear it, who can? Because But she, but she didn't Based on clear your it. Logic. If she would have came out and said, I didn't touch this man, and they said, no, he told her to say that, that'd Terrell, be one thing. you looking at a conversation that she's having with him. She didn't have that conversation with the public. She's, you looking at text messages that you said were received from Jay Majors, from her, between them two. She's not going to uh, do that shit to him. You know, it's just like... I feel like if you in a situation with a girl and she lied to the police about you hitting her... Yeah. That text message when she's saying sorry that this blew up it should didn't. include her saying, I'm sorry that I told them you hit me. You're playing. Because you didn't. And I'm going to make sure they know that. you playing like you, you you playing lawyer right now. Like you're, you're saying they should include. Like Terrell, if we're trying we to make him guilty. I'm not. I'm not. I love John I Major. hear what you're but saying. But I got to keep it 100. But we don't know. If she is coming out and saying, no, no, this didn't happen. Why are you so mad at that? Like why are people mad at that? Y'all want him to be guilty? You're right. And you know what? That's my thing. It's not that people why want him to be guilty. It's because... Why are upset that she's coming out and saying that? Hold up. Why are we not like, oh, okay, yeah. Why are we not, have, why are we not opening up to have a conversation about false accusations or faulty misaccusations? There's people... Why are we not that opening that combo? DV victims, a lot of times... You need to look up Stockholm for real. True. That's my thing. We having that conversation every day. We are having the conversation about DV victims every single day. A false accusation shouldn't bring up the convo about DV victims. It should bring up the conversation about false accusations. But right? we don't know if it's false yet. We don't know. So we have to have both conversations. But you want, but you see, but that's my thing. And that, you heard what I just said. When we talk about a false accusation. We're always going to have to talk about yes. DV. You know what I'm saying? That's true. And I think that ends up with us never having the conversation about false accusations. The Even when this is starting to lean towards a false accusation, y'all are saying, it this is signs of, of DV, signs of DV. Damn. It could be. And that's the bad thing, too, because it could be. It could not be. The only thing right now that can save Jonathan Majors is if the video that they say they have actually comes out and people get to see for themselves if it was abuse. Or if maybe she was trying to hit him type shit and he was just on some, I'm going to just put my hand out to stop you. Yeah. That's the only thing that can help him. Tell us what happened. Well, I'm excited to talk about this on the podcast because I feel like this is something me and Terrell can really relate to. But being your own boss is... Super popular now. I feel like you can get a t-shirt with be your own boss on that. CEO. Right? You know what I'm saying? Be your own boss. That's just like kind of overhyped. Everybody knows about entrepreneurship and doing your own thing. These days, it's kind of like the hype, right? I mm -hmm. think everybody's ultimate goal is to eventually work for themselves. If you're working a job somewhere, I'm thinking you probably have a side hustle right now that you're hoping lands you that sweet spot on the couch so you can just not do shit or vacay or do whatever you want. Um, but there are definitely some trials and tribulations that come with being your own boss and working for yourself. I think there are also benefits to There's working for somebody yeah. else and working for a company. And mm -hmm. we kind of talked about that a little bit before, of course, working for a company and not working for the man and shit like that. But what we really wanted to talk about is some of the ups and downs about working for yourself. Because it is not all it is cracked up to be. Trust me. It, it is not. Yeah. It is, but it ain't. It's this certain shit that 
it's almost like when somebody trying to sell you a used car, they not going to show you that scratch you didn't see. Right. Or it's just certain stuff that they don't tell you about. You know, mm -hmm. like everybody wants to work for themselves and I wake up when I want, do what I want. I work for now. I don't got to answer to nobody, but that's a lie because you still got to listen to you. You definitely have to answer to yourself. You got to answer to yourself. And guess what? You question yourself all day long. You never clock out. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the biggest impact that you're going to have is that clock in, clock out. Mm -hmm. We talked about this before, maybe slightly, but I told Terrell it's worth talking about it again. When you work for yourself, when you work for a company or somebody else, you go in, you clock in, you know what I'm saying? You work and then you clock out and then you get to like mentally release. When you work by yourself, you might have heard somebody say this before. You don't really start and stop. You just it just goes. Yep. So sometimes my night turns into morning all, all the time. time. <laughs> hey! No, nah, that's a fact, though. It's uh, definitely something that uh, your night will easily turn in the morning. Sometimes mm -hmm. that clock be moving fast as shit. Certain days of the week don't feel like it. When you work for yourself, you see people get on your on your TL and you say shit, and they say shit like, "Thank God it's Friday," and I'm like, "Man, yes." You know what I'm saying? You know, you don't really get the 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 start and stop of the week. And I was going to tell you, there's like momentum. There's momentum in the week. Like, I feel like there's that Friday thrust into the weekend. Mm -hmm. I always thought about, like, if I was throwing a party, it would feel way better if I worked all week party on the weekend. Like, mm -hmm. that party on the weekend lifestyle, I feel like that's a good, it's a good routine, like, like a light routine. I have my up on the weekend, and then I have my down during the weekday. Mm -hmm. When you work for yourself, sometimes it's hard to get that type of routine. Yep. That comfort of the up, down, up, down. Sometimes, you know, there yeah. is no routine. Yeah. You could be working late. You could be. And then you know what? It's like a uh, that structure is something that I do. Now, I don't miss it, but I 100 percent miss that. You definitely come from even I, my off days used to be Tuesday, Wednesday. Yep. And I used to know, whew, all right, bet. I'm not worried about none of this shit, at least for today. And maybe tomorrow night before I go back, I'll look at something. But when you work for yourself, you definitely got to think about that. And then also, your, your, um, your, your performance is not always going to be that great month you had. It's almost like that first high. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was talking to my boy uh, the other day. When I went to pick some stuff up from him, and he was talking about how, yo, my biggest month, I made this amount, bro. And I've been just trying to get back to this mm -hmm. ever since. Because if I could start doing that like that, I could quit my real job. Yeah. And it's like, you know what? You're right. You can. And you might do that. But you're never going to. It's like millionaires. They look at the next level. You talk to somebody like Kevin Hart, and he's the what he's thinking about is like, how can I? Take this to this level. Jay just went from one billion to two point five. Yeah, like, will you ever get to a point where you not trying to do that? I mean, it is better to be doing it for yourself, but as long as you just, it's, there's so much online about how you can start your own business and make sure you do this and make sure you do that, and that is cool. I'm all for it. We're living examples of it, but there's a dark side to it. It's like a high score mentality where you play in a game and you're killing it and you get the high score, after a while you start playing it to beat the high score. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not even playing it for the reason why I even got the high score. Like, the first time you got the high score, you was probably in a fucking zone. Damn, I got the high score. I was just dogging it because you fucked with it. Yeah. But look, the next however many times you're playing, you're really not even playing because you fuck with it anymore. You're just playing so you can just get, let me just do this. I already know how to beat this level. I already know how to do this. I'm just trying to get to mm -hmm. beat my last joint. Yeah. And you can see that's what sometimes your love of, the, of this shit will go away. Yeah. And that's why I think Terrell, I think that's the main thing that people should understand is that your love doesn't necessarily, the lo your love for what you do for yourself, wouldn't it doesn't go away. It just turns into work. I was telling Terrell, you be your own boss. Most of the time, 
you're beefing with your boss. So you're not really that cool with your boss at work. Or your boss is cool, but it's just like, kind of like, you know what? Fuck yeah, my I don't boss. Be at least here. me. Mm-hmm. Terrell knows me. I used to always be on some fuck my boss. Fuck him. He'd be all right type shit. Terrell, Terrell can't what? agree because he wasn't that type of dude. Me and my boss was tight. Terrell was, was the, tight. the boss. I was Terrell's worst nightmare when you really think about it. Yeah, you know why? He, he couldn't work I didn't work for him, but I worked in the same company. I wasn't as high up as him. I was young. So I, not young, but I was smaller. So I was like the niggas he could go to work and talk to. I could tell this nigga what I was doing. He'd be like, he said, now, I don't know how you doing. I don't know how you do it. Terrence then was sharing passwords and all that. I'm like, yo, y'all really wildin'. He called <laughs> this nigga Terrell for advice, and I'm like, oh, so I can just do this. Oh, no, see, because that would be illegal. Bye, Terrell. <laughs> <laughs> no, he oh, did. Oh, no, see, because if you do that, boop. Uh-huh, yeah, this motherfucker Run was breaking it. all types of SOPs and everything. Crook, crooked shit. Do you know what you just did? I'm like, this Taking Terrell. motherfuckers product, PRC, and telling this employee they can take right, it. <laughs> and then they like, shit can happen to you now. But bottom but, uh, yeah, you go ahead. Bottom line, my, the, the biggest purpose of, of, the, of being your own boss is a high risk, high reward. Mm-hmm. So you are going to go from working a dope schedule to working whatever you can muster together. And yep. if you don't muster anything together, then nothing's coming back. That's the stress of it. I feel like I could work an overnight job right now. I could work overnights. And if I was just getting a certain amount, I could manage my life. I could turn mm-hmm. my life into that job. Yep. And when you really think about it, your life is your job. Yeah. The way your job runs is the way that your life runs. If your job got you working in the mornings, you're going to be a night dude. If you work nights, you're the dude that's here in the morning. You work weekends, you're the weekday dude. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And if you hopping into a content creator space that's based around something that is not just readily there, like if let's say you want to get into like music, you want to like listen to new albums, do something like what we do, you got to understand the the highs and lows of that because as you can see like right now we've gotten projects but it hasn't been that big splash artist like it, like you think about it we talking about who's going to be the next that's something that as a content creator a music content creator we have to think about if you're doing gaming or something where you on Twitch every night and you just playing these different games or you doing multiplayer but even for them whatever. I think when that new Call of Duty gets well, I feel oh, like when yeah. that new Call of Duty is coming out, this Call of Duty kind of, these videos not hitting the same. You know what I'm saying? And you so see they how they mobilize. Own. Yeah. Remember, we, remember when the new Call of Duty came out, we was like, look at everybody getting their shit off. Everybody's on a camo grind. Yeah. Gun grind. All types of shit. It would be the same with, with the shit that we do. Like, like Terrell is saying, though, you're going to have a period where shit not really hitting. Like right now, I don't even think it's that people aren't dropping. I, like you said, all that big, big artist to drop. I just think music period is not in a state where it's like, like you said, like it ain't like this bang, like we got all of this dope music out. Right. I don't think it's like it was like like last year. Like it's very quiet. Like it that is new, very quiet. We really enjoy that uh that nudie project, and that would have normally flew under our radar. You know what I'm saying? For most of his projects, as most of his projects have, I wouldn't have let that nudie fly under the radar. It flew under your radar. Terrence, you wouldn't have listened to that nudie. I what Terrell. I listened to the last new joint before this last year. The joint last year. What was that joint called? EA Monster. I listened to that. Last year. So guess what? Look. So fuck with me. Look, you just listened to the one from last year. Fuck with me. He don't fuck with nudie. He don't fuck with nudie. <laughs> Hell shell, y'all. Nah, but for real, y'all. Honestly, and you know what? Just to, to end off on that, don't let that discourage you 100%. Um, start your own shit. Try to get out of a corporation because at the end of the day, when I quit my job, I was making, I was, I was so high up at my job that when I quit and they had my replacement there literally within a couple of days, yeah. it let me know like, damn, like, even though they fuck with you at this job, you this, you that, you really only a number to them. So it's better to just be your own number. Yeah. And just know that that, that, that graveyard shift comes with it. Mm-hmm. It does. And the last thing that I would say, too, is you're going to get to a point where you work on your side hustle so much and you grind it so much to try to make your side hustle your main thing that it's actually going to happen. Like, mm-hmm. you're going to do it. And it's going to feel like success for real. It's going to feel like a W. 
And it is, but the reason why I'm saying it's going to feel like a W is because you're going to feel like mission complete. Mm-hmm. And it really needs to feel like mission just getting started. Because trust me, your road ahead is way worse. You made it out of the retail bullshit, but you just got involved in some way worse shit. Because uh-huh. now, when your kid hungry, you're not thinking, maybe I go and pick up and some pick more up extra shit. Uh-huh. Maybe I'll go and pick up Sandy shift. Maybe i pick up Cali shift. Nah, hold up. Now it's on you. The tears that come out of his face? You. So, definitely something to think about. It's high risk, but it's also high reward. <laughs> I was on my Twitter and I was talking about how Snowfall had the potential to be a generational show. At least for our community. I felt like the rise of Snowfall was huge. It was this big show. John Singleton, he's got respect in, in, the, in the film world. Mm-hmm. The way that those two first seasons felt, like the way that they just felt watching it, just felt like we was watching something very special. And I felt like that show has definitely not lived up to its potential. That's not me saying it's a bad show. That's not me, me saying that it's not good. I think we still enjoy it. I think even now I can sit down and watch it. Um, cause people were thinking that I was saying by me saying it, that I'm saying it's not good. I'm just talking about it supposed to be, it was supposed to be a generational show. It was supposed to be a show that I felt like was at the primetime Emmys and was Mm -hmm. in a, in a golden globe world where, you know, it's a real drama story that really grabbed you. I know them first two seasons definitely were. Great. My heart used to race watching Snowfall. Like, I used to be like, oh, shit, how are you going to get out of this? Like, yep. I have not felt like that in the last, what, two three seasons? seasons? Three, four, okay. five, six. This is six. No. Yeah. Yeah. The, the rise is always better than when the guy gets to be the guy. You know what I'm saying? Which I get. In certain cases. Yeah. That's like, always. Yeah, you're right. I hate to use Breaking Bad because Breaking Bad is such a great show, or, you know. But once he became the guy, it's still they introduced new challenges for him at this level. Cause now it was first it was about you becoming the guy. And then it was about you trying to get out, but you can't. I would have liked to see that more from Snowfall. I'm not shitting on Snowfall at all. I think they did what they had to do. When you lose your guy, when you lose your creator and still keep a show running for three plus four plus seasons, it's to be appreciated. It's to be appreciated. But I do see the, the I do see a sadness in the in the fact that damn, this could have been one of them shows that really maps some shit out. Like shows like that with that type of story don't win primetime Emmys. They don't get the recognition for our performances. Mm-hmm. Uh my boy Evander, we all uh he talks about it all the time. But we do roles like that, like all oh, my drug dealer in South Central LA. They don't look at my performance as talent. They look at it as me just doing what niggas do, and that's an unfortunate reality of yeah, it. Yeah, it is. So I felt like ha- having John Singleton and having those first two seasons really grip people. Seasons four, five, and six is supposed to be where we win Oscar, where we win our Emmys. That's like when, like House of Cards wasn't winning. Emmys until those last seasons when he became the president. You know what I'm saying? Well, he didn't yeah. win until the, well the mid seasons because the, the last one was just just Claire and what? Oh yeah, but you know what I mean. Until but like when he yeah. Once the show got established, then they were able to soar because the talent stayed. I yep. think Snowfall was soaring, and then like I said, it just. It just went down, y'all. It's all good, but it's still a great show. But hold on, see, because there's going to be people that want to know what you mean by that. you just saying it went down. There are some people that don't think it went down. There are some people that do think it's a generational show. So I don't think I don't think that Snowfall is a generational show because I feel like the story kind of fell off. I think there's a lot of pieces in Snowfall, and I didn't really want to get on this big Snowfall review, mm-hmm. but... There's a lot, I think there's a lot of things that make Snowfall work, which is the characters. I think we love the characters. We always going to love the characters. But when you have a show where you love characters, you're trying to save them. So you'll do things like not having your characters pull up certain places that they would have pulled up. Or you'll have them not be there when you know this character would have mm-hmm. been there because you're trying to save. Or have them not get shot. Have them not get shot or survive. Damn, bullets him. grazed past me. And when you're watching the story like that, it starts to become a little unrealistic. And when you 
watching a story that's set in a time where we can all reference it. South Central LA, back then, oh, we can tell you what probably would have happened based on research. So now yeah. we're watching a show. That doesn't go away. But um, I was, t- I was saying on Twitter, Snowfall haven't won any primetime Emmys. They've never been nominated. They've never been nominated for Golden Globes. They got like one nomination for the NAACP or maybe a couple. Mm-hmm. A couple BET Awards and nominations. But they've never been put. It was never put in that serious light like it was supposed to be. And I feel yeah. like it was really supposed to be. I don't think that that was a show that was like The Walking Dead or Power Book or BMF where it's just bullshit, you know? Mm-hmm. I think it was that was a show that was supposed to yeah. turn something for us. John at the front of that, that show was going to end up being something else. Yeah. And you know what? The fact that it didn't win Emmys and shit, that does kind of put it in this tier and not that tier. Or, it didn't, or the fact that it didn't garnish that many nominations. Now, you could play the, you know... We should have got a nomination for this. I would argue Amin Joseph this year. Mm-hmm. I'll give him a nomination for playing Jerome. Yeah. Um, but do they see him playing Jerome as a skill though? That's what it comes down to, too, though. People yeah. will say. They was they they not gonna see him. But the wires, you see, that's the thing. That's where people fucked up. Y'all put it up against the wire and y'all said, is Snowfall better than the wire? All right. All of us that actually watch that show. Mm-hmm. Every top TV show list that you're going to see, that's going to be either one through three or four. Yeah. That's like, the reason why you don't see Snowfall on the top TV show list. And for the people that are comparing at to that The Wire. The Wire had a real story. That had, it had. The, 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 it just had the same language mm-hmm. through every season. You never, even on some of the slower seasons, the show was the show. So the show pacing was always the same, for real, for real. You might not have been as interested in certain things, but The Wire's pacing is n- next level. That's why you can rewatch it. I got on my soap, but I got in trouble on, on my Twitter because I said Snowfall's fallen, you know what I'm saying, potential reminded me of Game of Thrones, where I felt like Game of Thrones had the Game of Thrones had best TV show of all time right in the palm of their hands and, and, and fumbled it. it. Mm-hmm. Now they just have really, really good show. Uh-huh. With if you make it to the end. Yeah. I feel like Snowfall has that same lost potential. And the only reason why I think it's, it's as big as Game of Thrones lost potential is because we don't have a trailblazer who can start this up again. John Singleton was a trailblazer who trailblazed before. Look, Boys in the Hood. I've been doing, I've been blazing trails. So... He was a trailblazer that could have literally kicked the door into us being taken seriously in the TV show, TV drama world. Uh huh. I can I can make them take us serious, you yeah. know. Once I'm gone, and now y'all in the room, now it's oh that's just some bullshit. You know the shit that they make for BET, All American, mm-hmm. uh, Power Book, all of that, BMF. We lost now a side Snowfall, of it, yeah. You know, and yeah. I feel like the people who don't agree. You might really love what they are doing with the characters, and if you do, I totally get why you love Snowfall. I get it. It's just if not looking at the story, though. Right. You start asking yourself, "Damn, we watching all of this just to see this nigga Frank asking Reed for his money back with my money." Uh, my issue with Snowfall is that there's no police presence, and we're gonna talk Tariq and uh Frank. And you know, matter of fact, let's just go to that because that's that's my whole beef with the sh- with the shit. They was asking me last week. Uh, who was the uh, the better drug dealer between Frank and Tariq? And I picked Tariq, right? Man, I know what everybody thinks. Man, what? Tariq? Ghost son? Man, he ain't shit. X, Y, Z. Cool. They was right? saying his daddy Frank ain't came from, nothing on Frank. Frank came from the bottom. Frank was this. Frank was that. Frank haven't had to deal with half of, what, of what Tariq has had to deal with. Monet? Monet was his partner. Monet is like Osa or uh, the nigga from the CIA. Nah, you right. And this day, people say, look, Frank was working with the CIA. Teddy ain't even in the CIA no more. He still can't come. He had to go. Ki- well, I'm not going to. I don't want to spoil. Mo- Monet is like Teddy. Not really, though, because Teddy was CIA. So in the beginning, I get it. He okay, was serving. Yeah. Like, you was, you was working with him. I get it. My only thing about Tariq is Frank would be in jail if he was dealing drugs 
when to, where Tariq is now. I don't give a fuck about the time dif- difference. Okay, yeah. And that's my beef that I got with Snowfall. Because Tariq got to deal with this detective. Detectives that wanted his fucking dad. You know what I'm saying? The, the Hispanic chick is back. Mm-hmm. He's still dealing with sacks in his backyard. Nigga done beat three cases. You know what I'm saying? He's like John Gotti. Nah, yeah. Frank has to deal with no police at all. The one police they have is a crackhead now. And the one that John Singles had in the show, Mel's dad, right? Then we'll give him that one. That one off, the one neighborhood share. To me, the best antagonist in, in the, show. the entire show. And that's where they lost it when you know why? they lost John. That was the only person. And, that's, that is the, and to me, that is where the show struggled. The, that is where Snowfall struggled. With no real antagonist. Think about how good of an antagonist, even though that we we talking about some y'all did we on some bullshit uh TV talk right now, so uh-huh. sorry. Think about how good of an antagonist Dante was in the last season of Power. Only one season. Mm-hmm. But think about how good of an addition he was for this one season, the strong rich dude. Mecca. Mecca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. His real name was Dante though, right? I think so. That was his real name. Wow. That ain't what Diana said at the table. <laughs> How she fucking some nigga named Mecca? Mecca. Think about how good of an addition nah, of yeah. an antagonist he was. I think Scully. But the layers of the, I'm, I'm, I better cut you off, but the layers of the writing, it was always this new threat in who Mecca was, but also the same threat from the other side. So I got to be careful about this side and that side. Nah, see, I'm just talking about like, all right, but yeah, writing is one thing. But as you can see with these shows, you really don't have to write the best. It be the, it be the situ like what are we watching? And I think people enjoyed the mecha aspect of that show for power, but with Tariq. Because it added somebody for Tariq to have to outsmart. Mm-hmm. And that's why the only reason why I bring that up is because with Frank and Mel's dad, basically that cop, who had all of that juice on Frank. This is somebody that had real power over Frank. Like, I really could hurt you right now with this shit that I got. So it put us in a real crunch. Frank and the viewer. Like, us as the viewers, we like, fuck this nigga. Like, fuck he, he, about to, he about to ruin our whole shit. Like, we Frank. Mm-hmm. But I think once that, I think once he dealt with that, it was hard to establish that level of a threat to Franklin. They just never did it. They like, could've. after that, that was the last big threat. I don't think his uncle and auntie are threats. And I never thought that Scully was a threat because they never let nothing happen to Franklin. I never thought that man, boy, man, they could have had a, they could have had a new police threat. And, and uh, even in um Sons of Anarchy, one of the best shows of all time, y'all know Unser when Unser was the sheriff, right? You had police presence. Then they randomly get a new sheriff, and it's like, oh shit, brand new sheriff. He said, I don't want y'all riding these motorcycles with these cuts off. Y'all need to take them shits off. Like, so it's like a new, they could have, in, when Brud died. They introduced new villains, but they introduced them as Franklin's family. Like, they made his father uh, uh, a villain. They made Mel like this type of villain type character. You know what I'm saying? They had to join the dude with the to, bush, but he ended up working with Louis. Yeah, he's going back and forth with Leon. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. At a certain point. Ended up killing his man. Frank always had an issue with his inner circle. So... There are people who are like, oh, they foreshadowed this. They foreshadowed what happened in Snowfall. No, y'all. Foreshadowing, just because you can point to somebody saying some shit or, or something aligning, that's exactly why they did it. So you can say, oh, okay, because this is going to tie uh-huh. back to that. That don't make it good. That doesn't necessarily make... Foreshadowing doesn't make it good. Yeah, or It don't really speak to execution. Because that's what they did with Game of Thrones. You could say da- Daenerys said she was going to do this. And season one, that don't make when she did it good. It was still like, why the fuck would you do this? Because of the character arc. Yep. Sorry for the soapbox on the TV thing. If my yeah, answer, no my answer you for never who's said, the better drug dealer yeah. between Tariq and Frank, I'm going to go with Frank. I'm, I think I'm going to go. I think Tariq would be in jail. I think for, <laughs> y'all got Tariq fucked up. Tariq has dodged jail three times. We've never you know seen why? Frank dodge jail. This Tar- nigga didn't have to deal with police the at same all. Way, okay, bet. The same way we give Frank his benefit of his time era, like, you know, he's back yeah. then in the 80s. He has to deal with no cops during Reaganomics. And yeah, you're selling crack. But look, we can get off that they don't got that many officers because it's the 80s. It's, it's an old town, you know? Please. They this was locking is, niggas up by the thousands This in is the do 80s. the right thing time. You they know? was locking niggas up by the thousands in the 80s. Why you think they made fuck the police coming straight from the underground? Nah, you're right. There was a lot of police <laughs> out there. You're right. I'm, I'm, you're right. You're right. There's not a lot of cops. 
But I'm just saying, you know. Nah, the same right. way you say, oh, where the cops at with him, you can say the same thing for Tariq. Tariq is doing everything what? he's doing in 2023. He His ass would be caught. Tariq, is, they was putting the weed in or whatever. They was putting their drugs in like this little... Frank look, was, and the little shoot that they was going up to with the combination. you Y'all motherfuckers would be caught. Y'all, why would they be caught? Tariq. And at least there's detectives in the trope trying to catch these niggas. Them detectives not doing shit but talking to each other. When Terrence, you, they getting close. You ain't see that last and episode? That, and that's why the wire was good. And that's because why, yeah. Mar, uh, look, Marla will have Chris shoot a nigga behind a building, and then you'll see Bunk and another nigga back there behind a building. Looking like, at the body. Yep. Right there. Uh-huh. They don't do that in power. They you don't do that. They don't do that in Snowball. They're, Snowball don't even have detectives at all. They got one crackhead cop. Terrell, they do have the Migo. The dude who's, who, who was with. Oh, was with your mother. Was in your brother. Terrence, that dude is, uh, what's he? He's, right? what do they call it? Something KG or? Yeah, you right. He ain't even the cops. Where is the motherfuckers with the lights? All right, Terrence, let's get off of this. Uh, one thing, the last yeah, thing I, I feel I, bad for people who haven't seen any of the shit that we're talking nah, about. Nah, no bullshit. Only thing I'll say about Frank is Frank make his own product. That's the one leg up he got on Tariq. Tariq always be like, I need to connect. But yeah. motherfucker can find one, though. We working with the Wakanda motherfuckers now. That nigga Tariq can put on a fit, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> he got the drug dealer look down for sure. Tariq not even the best drug dealer on his own show. Who better, Kane? I think what's the name? I think everybody better than Reek. He needs y'all got Tariq own, fucked up. Terrell, his up. own girl moved this shit better than him, and she know it. Terrence. Effie moved the weight better Effie than Reek, be and down. she know. She Effie, know she moved better than him. Effie, you a part of my operation. You know more than a... It's like, nigga, fuck that. You was boo-loving you know with more. this... You was boo-loving with this girl, just like how your father was. I always been about my dough. Don't come over here trying to act like you're going to tell me about some business, because you know that I do this. You are outspoken AM. This still mine. You work. You still work for me. Stop. Don't put me in the, in the back, Reek. First you, of all, you she on some foul shit. you got to connect. Reek. You're as powerful as your connect. Soon as I get it, I can trick you off and do whatever the fuck I want. Right, F? Right, F? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the dinosaurs might not have ever existed. Okay. Because if a meteor came and knocked out all the dinosaurs, why the fuck did the bones be left? Wouldn't the bones be incinerated? Your bones should have been turned to dust by the media, right? Or at least not laid together like you laid down and just died after some time. Here's the first finger bone, leg bone, hip bone. They should be bones everywhere, right? No bullshit. Like, they act like the dinosaur laid down and said, I'm going to die right here. And yes. then they just died and all his bones was right there. And then on top of that, we don't even know what the fuck. Like, the T-Rex that we love and see may have not looked like that at all. Do you know? That's a fact. Yeah, I watched the TikTok the other, the TikTok the other, the other day. <laughs> Terrell, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Motherfucking TikTok, the dude put up this uh, skeleton, and he said, this is a dog skeleton. It's a dog. This is a German Shepherd. This is a German Shepherd uh, skeleton. You can see the body and the tail. And then he said, this is not a German Shepherd skeleton. This is a muskrat. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you see how yeah, you didn't yeah, even yeah. know? You ain't even know. And I said, damn, maybe we don't know. What's up, boo? She hear us talking about it. She said, did somebody say something about some felines? <laughs> Dinosaurs are not felines. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, well, she just woke up. You she's are cat. so stupid. Terrell, no, you no. think I really think that I'm, playing, I'm making a joke because she's a cat? No, nah, if you really said somebody saying something about some felines. And what is she? A she's a feline. That's why I said it's a joke from We're her. We're talking about dinosaurs. Anyway, he... Is right, y'all. Damn, I hope my drink don't ring. He's right, y'all. That is crazy. If the meteor, and this is my thing, what are you talking about? A meteor? What are you talking about? I thought the dinosaurs got killed by a meteor. If the dinosaurs got killed by a meteor, then what happened? How did the earth rebuild from that? And okay, you know what? And this is the thing. Like, I thought the dinosaurs got built by like a whole bunch of like fire. a heat wave or some shit, right? This like, is what, what the hell happened to them. What the fuck happened to the dinosaurs? And this is my thing. If the dinosaurs didn't get killed by a meteor and they all just, uh, what they call it? Went extinct. Went died. extinct. I don't, I don't, I don't, I just, I don't know. Yeah, like, I, I'm with you on the fact that, oh, yeah, this is the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Because based on all of the bones we found, 
This is exactly how it would look. Listen to this, right? Tank. 66 million years ago, dinosaurs had the ultimate bad day. With a devastating asteroid impact, a rain that lasted 180 million years was abruptly ended by an asteroid. Oh, so it was an asteroid, it's not a meteor. I felt like we wouldn't even not even be talking if we was if it was a meteor. I don't know, bro. Oh, so an asteroid hit the world, boom, 66 million years ago, yeah. And all the dinosaurs was in the same place. So them bones was there for 66 million years. Y'all, do y'all know how much 66 million is? That is 6,600 thousand million. Oh, that would be billion. 6,000,000 a mathematician now. <laughs> there is no way. I don't believe it. I'm a conspiracy theorist. All right, bet. Let's get to the breakups. First, the fat boys break up. Now, every day I wake up. Somebody got a problem with hope. Man, that is a crazy thing. <laughs> it is because, like, yo, this is a T-Rex. Okay, bet. Well, low key, where did y'all get all these bones, and how do you know it came from one dinosaur? Just because you found it in the same You got place. all types. they got all types of different species. Even the little ones. Yeah, like there's, like, there's dinosaurs everywhere. So if a meteor or an asteroid hit 66 million years ago, let's say we did some research since then. 65 million years ago. You mean to tell me that a T-Rex bones all were right here? How do you know that these not the bones from something else? Do T-Rex have different type bones? Oh, look, well, yeah, well, they do. Well, well how do you know? You weren't <laughs> fucking around. Oh, look, know. this, oh, I can tell you why. Because this is the bone of a T-Rex, and this is the bone of a stethosaurus. How the fuck do you know? You just found both. Imagine and if you went to school for archaeology, you learned what they wanted you to learn. Imagine me finding tree branches in the ground, and I said, this is a tree of an oak tree. Oh, this is a dandelion tree. How do you know? <laughs> This motherfucker's finding branches. In the comments, licensed archaeologists here want to provide clarity. You know what? Come licensed on, archaeologists. archaeologists. Y'all could be on some bullshit for career. And I'm not even shitting on y'all, but low key, what are y'all researching? What do you do every day? What do you do every day? Yeah, I just feel like y'all are up at like baseball fields. Like, hold up. Dig that mound up. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly the type of yeah you know like what are y'all doing every day i told trail it's what it's af it's post valentine's day you know what i'm saying so some of y'all post say patty mm -hmm. nah post valentine's day so some of y'all last efforts so you know make shit right you know the roses died oh yeah she ate all the chocolate she ain't even give a fuck about the teddy bear. I don't know where it's at. You on a FaceTime with her, you like, show me the bear, show me the bear. She like, hold up, let me get it. And she can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> it just is what it is. Like, it's a, it, I feel like it's a rough time. So I told Terrell, we've been asked so many times on um, private messages, on the Patreon messages, Twitter, Instagram, all of that, about breaking up, breakups. And... Tips for dealing with breakups. Shout out to all of my people out there that's dealing with a breakup. If you're dealing with a breakup right now, go ahead and look. <sighs> this is exactly what I needed. <laughs> look, go ahead and sit forward, you know what I'm saying? So to hear the worst advice and get some real, real bad, real bad advice. Because Terrell, Terrell says my, my advice is bad, but for real, for real. I'm going to tell y'all right now, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to let him get his shit off. Y'all know, know how I, I'll say at the very <laughs> end. I am not, first and foremost, I'm not dealing with a breakup or going through anything like this. Terrell, I told Terrell, you try to make me this, this breakup guy, or the, the, this toxic man, like this future level dude who's, oh yeah, you got to tell the town, Terrence on a toxic, I can see him somewhere, oh yeah, Terrence on a toxic, just soiling my entire reputation with friends and family, but um, for my people who are married, or the Terrells out there who are in beautiful relationships and you're loving it. And guess what? You're uh -huh. so happy. Go ahead and skip past this if you want. Because your black ass might need to be spinning the block and coming back and listening to this. Because we don't know what your relationship is looking like. Anything can happen. That's a fact. That's not just life. That's not just a plane crash. Anything can happen like what is this? 
Anything me, can happen. Like, who is that? Me skipping four at. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> if I fuck this nigga, don't eat me. <laughs> don't give a fuck about this. Because my relationship is going to work. <laughs> you coming she back? She ain't going nowhere. I'm <laughs> going in, into sports states. <laughs> you going to be in the DMs later? Yeah. Whatever, so what y'all talking about? <laughs> Bro, I just need some advice. You don't even know what you skip. All right, look. We're going to start We're gonna start with one. We're going to five. It's, it's not going to be nothing crazy. So my first tip for when you're dealing with a breakup is you need that new car smell. Huh? What? I need that new car smell for real. You know what I'm saying? Sir, you know how you get a new car, right? Mm-hmm. Well, how do you tell if your car new? It smells great. Smell great when you get in that bitch, right? Even when you, you know how they give you the key and they say, get in, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> they know they, like, they know they selling you, so you want to get in? Yeah. You get in because they think that you're doing a favor. You get in, and that's the first thing you smell. You smell that new car smell. You know what I'm saying? Oh All of my people out there, you got a new car, new bike, new house, new So you're telling people to buy a new car? No. Oh, okay. And you say you wasn't going to say anything? You're right. Oh, look, new house, new car, new book, new ride, new sheets, new pillow, new shower curtain, new anything that got that, that new feel, right? You, I mean, it all essentially, it essentially feels the same because you're going to keep going back to it and now I'm living a new life. Every time I go to the store, if I get a new whip, I'm living John like a new life. Think about it. If I tell you right now to go up the street to the Costco and get me a case of water, you'll be like, hell no, nah, go get your own case. But if you just got a new car, you I'm say, I'm going to consider that shit. I'll ride I'll be back, bro. Let me go get this case of water. Because I ride, I feel like riding my shit. Long story less long, y'all. What I mean by a new, new car smell is you got to put yourself in. You have to reek that new car smell like it's not go buy a new car but you got to be on some new time your life has to feel new Mm -hmm. if you are doing the same routine that you were doing when you were with somebody and the only thing different about your routine is they're no longer there you're going to feel like shit every day and you're just going to think about what's missing from your routine which is them so what you need to do is you need to get that new car smell. You need something new to watch. You need something new to play. You need somewhere new to go. You need some new people to be around. You need something that you need to start, whether mm-hmm. it's like I'm about to start a new job, puzzle, fucking my career, fellas. Start that center build. Start the power forward build. You know what I'm saying? Get the Slashing. Get, what's the name of that game where they was playing? It was hard as hell. Elden Ring. Get Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hmm. Or get into something new. You know why? So that you can fall in love with something else. You have already spent all of your time and emotions being tied to somebody else. That ain't going to change. You're always going to love that person. But getting that new car smell, it make, it make living life easier. You know what I'm saying? Your ride to work, and I want you to think about that. My ride to work kills me every morning but when i got that new car that ride kill me not but when i smell that new car smell when i know i'm riding nice it's not that bad i drove all the way to new jersey when i got my new whip bit not to real mm-hmm. so holla at me man that was great it was that was a great time yes you need something new to concentrate on we went to six flags uh go ahead no no you got it yeah six flags new jersey yeah we need to go back yes we got on two rides Anyway, number two, breakups are not uh, permanent, even though they feel permanent. And I think that's something that somebody needs to tell anybody that's dealing with a breakup because I know when it happened, and like I said, it's, it's cut off, you start thinking, damn, you know what? Well, you know, let me start thinking about what the single life is about to be like. Let me see who I'm about to talk to next. And you know what I'm saying? My only advice about this one right here is just to not go around telling people your shit. I think once you, if you do break up with somebody, or if you do go through a breakup, I think you need to live with it, and then you just need to do you. You know what I'm saying? Y'all ever broke up with somebody and then got back with them in like a day? Mm-hmm. You ever broke up with somebody, got back with them in a day, but in between that day, you done told your mother, you done told your friend, you told your brother, fuck that bitch. I'm out here. I'm out <laughs> here doing me, right? Uh, you got to call <laughs> Now back. you missed the we back. <laughs> and look, some of y'all don't even got to explain it. You just like, yeah, I'm on the way up to the 7-Eleven. Got shorty with me. <laughs> <laughs> and then now your whole circle's like, 
Oh, oh what's going on, sis? <laughs> I didn't think that we was on this energy. That's all. That's my only advice. Hold your shit. Sit in shit for like two days, then let everybody know. Mm-hmm. Don't, cause, cause, like I said, it might not be permanent. It might just be some spur of the moment shit. Stop living your life like, damn, this shit is over with, dog. We all about to be living for fifty more years. You know that? I'm, I told Terrell, we about to be here for a long ass time. Yep. I'm only 28. It's somebody walking around right now celebrating their 80th birthday today. Yep. It's somebody celebrating 80 years and they had to wake up this morning. They had to get dressed. They had to eat breakfast. Check on motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you about to be here for 60 more years, bro. Even though you lost her, you got 60 more years. You might get back with that job. <laughs> like, whatever, son. Whatever, son. Talk to the ladies. It's ladies out there dealing with uh, breakups, too. For the ladies, too. You know what I'm saying? This life not. This night. This life is short, but it really ain't life long, dog. They say life is short when you lose it. And that's the only time they say that Uh shit. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. Number three. Damn, that nigga spitting a sermon. Crazy how the things he was saying was perfect. Had to wait the whole podcast. Terrell stopped talking. It was worth it. This nigga's dangerous. We got to get him off the field. Von Trey is worth it. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) <laughs> number three stop thinking about the person that left you being with someone else because guess what if you don't know for sure you're wrong Mm-hmm. that's some good advice I'm gonna just let it marinate a little bit and I'm gonna say it again stop thinking about that person that left you being with somebody else because if you don't know for sure you are wrong most likely. Now, what if you do know for sure? Just a real quick, just to add. What if you know, uh, what if you know for sure? I, in college, I got cheated on, and I knew that they were with somebody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that would lead me to my next joint. Oh, because, hold, 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 hold up. But wait. Good. Answer my question. Yeah. <laughs> no, but look, that would lead me to my, num- my number four, because I was getting ready to say, I know there's going to be situations where you do know for sure. And if that's the case... All right, well, you know what? My bad. Go ahead and nah, still give the advice right. on that. There's going to be people that's like, nah, fuck that. I know she fucking that nigga that work up at that. You know? Mm-hmm. I know she fucking with him. This is my thing. That's why I said, if you don't know for sure, you're most likely wrong. And I'm going to keep it 100, bro. Most of the time, and I can say this probably goes for both races. Not races, but both genders, I'm sorry. Oh. Any, I'm sorry. Anybody. <laughs> oh, no. What did he but say? Oh, no. It just cuts off. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we got, we got it. <laughs> but now, nah, look, if you don't know for sure, you probably just wrong. You probably just tripping because that's that's what breakups do. Mm-hmm. They break out with you. You start thinking about all the people's pages that they used to go on. They used to like you start thinking about niggas that they said was up to niggas that you know that they know. And you start saying, oh, OK, I see what the master plan was all leading up to. It was all a plan. Move me out. Get mm-hmm. with him, right? Oh, I see. Yeah. They Guess say, what? This the thing about that. That makes this feel way better, believe it or not. Yeah. If I know that you left me for bruh, oh, I could deal with this way better than if I had a real situation where we just don't know how to communicate or we just don't know or mm-hmm. we're not on the same page or we live in different, you know? Like, it'd be easier to deal with if you was just on some fuck me shit, because now I can get on my evil villain story. You know what I'm saying? Now I can yep. get on my villain, or what do you call it? Your, uh, my villain origin story. Villain yeah. origin. So, that's true, and there's nothing more dangerous than a dormant, alone mind. Yeah. Think about how intricate your dreams are. You remember those orange? You remember those, um, the Vapor Max you had with the orange? Yeah. Rubber at the bottom? I used to love them joints. In, in my dream last night, when I told you I was seeing my, uh, First grade girlfriend who was trying to get me back. The reason why I woke up from the dream. She said she was trying to give you back. She was trying to get me back. She was on some yo, I can fix I this say. type shit. And I'm like the girl, I'm like the girl running away from her, but we in a mansion. Anyway, uh, the only reason why I woke up is because them shoes, I was wearing them shoes, and in the whole dream, I'm walking around this house running from this chick, but looking for them shoes. I haven't seen no shoes in years. But your mind yeah. can construct. So much shit, yeah. That just get to get back what you're saying. When you sitting there thinking about what Shorty did or where she's at or what she did, you will drive yourself insane. And you think that you don't have that information, like you just said. 
that information is something that you have in like like your mental attic. Like it's mm-hmm. up there. Yeah. Think about how much shit that you do have stored in your head. Somebody could say, "Ha ha, Dominican Republic. They don't have. They have these in the Dominican Republic." All of a sudden, all of your mm-hmm. memories from Dominican Republic that you have in storage is now right here. Yeah. So now it's like, no, they don't have that here. They have this, 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 this. We did this, this, this. That's how mm-hmm. people kind of, kind of spin it. And like, you're right. That's why I said, if you don't know for sure, you're gonna be sitting there sorting through all of that bullshit. And you're really just, at the end of the day, you're doing it to yourself. Yeah. None of it's happening. I want you to think about that. You're thinking about your girl getting thrashed. That's what I used to do. You stop talking to, talking to somebody, you think they're talking to some other nigga, that nigga, that nigga giving it to her crazy every night. She done found a nigga that can put it down crazy. She done, you know what I'm saying? That's what we go to. And it's like, at the end of the day, it's you doing that. That's mm-hmm. not even happening. We got number four. Don't ignore their social media and don't make efforts for them to not exist in your life. Okay. And the reason you why... You said don't ignore their social media? Mm-mm. Don't ignore their social media and don't make efforts for them to not exist in your life. Like, I'm, trying, I'm not trying to give y'all tips. Hold on, wait. I'm sorry. I'm just looking for clarity. That I cliche. You yes. said that I know this person. Let's say you know this person has moved on. Moved on somebody with else. somebody else. Yeah. You're telling me that I should make efforts for them to be in my life. No. And I, not to ignore them on social media. I said, don't ignore their social media. Don't <laughs> ignore or I, uh, don't ignore their so- social media or make efforts for them to not exist in your life. I'm sorry. Okay, so explain that first part. What should you do on social media? So you shouldn't unfollow them. I wouldn't unfollow. I wouldn't mute them. I wouldn't block them. I just I let they post fly up just the same way that they always did. Man, I'm trying to help y'all out. All right, tell me how that's gonna help. That's like your doctor saying you need to eat greens in the morning, middle of the day, at night. What you gonna do? Man, Terrence, I don't that's even not know greens. If I can... So I can be reminded of this trauma every waking second of the day. I'm just saying, when your doctor's trying to help your black ass out and they tell you some shit, the first thing you do is, dog, I don't know about that. I'm this not telling not you doctor. this for fun. He's the nigga that works at the GNC I'm that you can't you really this trust. For fucking hell. <laughs> He's the nigga that works at the vitamin shop, but you don't know if this nigga just got hired. I be trying to help niggas. So it's weight protein. Because guess what? It's not me that's sitting here tripped off that's wondering how oh you you sit in there that's dealing with it not me i'm trying to help you out you heard advice from everybody else okay we're gonna let you out you know what i'm saying so so but how would that help me seeing that over and over what if they post and post and post and i don't want to see that shit when you break up with your girl fellas ladies too they will be posting way more than they ever posted ever before in their life they will be looking better than they ever looked ever before in their life new outfits New hair, new shoes, new friends, new cars, new places. Get used to it. Because guess what? It's a lot happening without you. It's a lot happening without you. Get used to it so you can go and make shit happen for yourself. Because guess what? If I'm blocking off everything that you do, right? Look, even, even me doing this right here. y'all. I want y'all to visually see if you look at the visual podcast. Look at the effort. I don't even see Terrell, but look what I have to do for my life. <laughs> look how, how I would have to Damn, live this life. It don't take nothing to block nobody. And that's why I'm telling you, no, it don't take shit to block people. But, but this, I do know but that this I have thing. been blocked. Once I do this, now I haven't worked on anything. I'm not prepared for this. That's why you don't block that. My thing is this. You block them on your social media, right? And you make efforts to make sure that they don't exist in your life. Mm-hmm. I ain't got to see him. I don't want to see you. I'm not going to go to the same places that I used to go to. Like, say, you and your shorty used to go to the same library or some shit. Or y'all go to the same school. You, you got people who would switch schools. You know what I'm saying? Nah. I'm going to keep doing my same thing. I'm going to see you in the same places. I'm not going to follow you. Because if me and you not going to be together and that's the reality of it, we just not going to be together. But my life still goes on. You know what I'm saying? So I have to get used to seeing you exist without me. And the reason why I need to get used to that is because if I don't get used to seeing that, it's going to hit me different Mm because I'm used to seeing you exist with me. So blocking you, not looking at what you do, ignoring you, 
that's only going to make me think about what you're really doing for real. Mm -hmm. If I know, I know. If I just got to tell myself not If to. I see you in passing, I see you in passing, and I'm cool with that. These days on social media, you posting is me low-key nowadays seeing you in passing. I know what you're up to. Because remember, look, if I saw you in passing 30, 30 years ago, I would say, I saw Terrell, he's working on his business. You know what I'm saying? He got this, he got that. I saw him at the grocery store. Because I saw you in passing. Mm -hmm. These days on Instagram, you could post about your business and I can say, oh yeah, I saw Terrell. He's working on his business. He's uh-huh. I could post on my story and say I'm here or whatever. It's a new day. We do it every day. Yep. We do it every day. That's why I'm like, that's gonna be a tough one for people though, because sometimes seeing it is just it feel it hurt. I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's like dealing with the pain. It's like a cold shower. Mm -hmm. I always tell you, and then these this was two points that I wanted to put on for this. Like when you put them in the dark. Right? When you when you ignore them and you have them outside of your life, when you finally see them, or when you do finally see them, even on Instagram, now you getting all of this. Cause you done hit it for real. You're not mm -hmm. really dealing with the fact that y'all not together. You're hiding it from yourself. You're trying to hurry up and low key be past it. It's over with. Block. Done. Don't got to look at you. Thinking about myself. Working on myself. Posting. I am working on myself. You're constantly reminding yourself that you're working on yourself so you can forget. And then when you see them somewhere in person, when you see them on Instagram, mm -hmm. everything that you are trying to that just post. put up here and not deal with, now you got to deal I'm with like it. Like them attic stairs come tumbling yeah. down. My best friend used to always be like, we used to work together. And she used to be like, I just hope he don't come in here. I just hope my ex don't come in here. And I'm like, you know what that comes from? Like the fearing your ex comes from like not wanting to deal with mm -hmm. certain realizations of whether it's over with, trauma that y'all have or whatever. But like the fear, oh, I just hope I don't have to see them face to face. Think about how you need to get over that. And that's anybody. Fearing anybody, not seeing something, not wanting to see somebody face to face, whatever that is. Mm. You either need to get away from it or get, get through it. Because otherwise, that shit is impacting your life more than you know. Last two, uh, uh, last two things on that, on that last one. Butterflies go away. You know how you feel like shit and you say you're going to say, oh, well, if I see her, I'm going to feel like shit. You won't always feel like shit. You're just going to feel like shit in the beginning. Nah, yeah. You're going to see you her. Definitely get past like that. I said, she's going to have on that nice-ass dress that she didn't wear when y'all was together. She's going to look better than you've ever seen her. She's going to be getting thrashed by niggas. Fuck it. Cause guess what? None of she that shit, might not be. Look, I'm about to say none of that shit is really happening. Last but not least, this is a very last one, sir. I know I got on a soapbox so with this, and I appreciate You're good. it. The last thing I would, I would recommend that y'all do is to go and get close with, and I'm not trying to be gender gender specific, mm -hmm. but go and get, go and lean on the people in your life that are the same gender as what you lost if, if if this hopefully i'm saying this in the most respectable way but in terms of what, if you like, lost your girlfriend then lean on the women in your life that are when, lean on the women in your life that you know love you you know what i'm saying oh, okay you lose your girlfriend you lose your boyfriend go lean on your if you have them fathers brothers male figures in your life that actually do fuck with you and the reason why I say that is because... On a platonic level? Yeah, that's why I say... Okay. This is for my people who got family. Friend, mm. uh, whether it's your brothers. For me, whenever I went through a breakup, my sisters, my mother, so mean so much. And the reason why is because when you're going through a breakup, you start looking at the other... You could start looking at the other sex in a different way. Mm -hmm. That's why you got a lot of women who hate men. It really all is rooted from their hatred for this really probably this one dude. And I think you could go through so much with one person that you get sick of her and women. And it's a lot of men that are sick of her and all women. Mm -hmm. And men, are, there's a lot of women that are sick of him and all men. And I think just like how people say, okay, you feel like that, but would you feel like that if it was your uncle? Would you feel like that if it was your sister? In that same conversation, in that same ballpark, I think dealing with a breakup, leaning on your sisters, your mothers, your brothers, the people that are of the same sex, it'll remind you how 
it'll remind you of the close relationships that you're able to maintain and have with the mm-hmm. opposite sex. And you know what I'm saying? And like what you're what you come from, what you're looking for. Yeah. Get when you talk back, like take like if you, you're not with your girl anymore. Spend more time with your sis, your mom. Cause low key, these are the women that know you inside and out. That's these a good cleanse too. The women that love you the way you want to be loved by women. And they're gonna be honest with you. And they yeah. They keep it a hundred. They're gonna you, be honest. That's why I say you have to lean on them other ones, cause they they the ones that's like, nigga, you're tripping. Hold on, wait. What'd she do? Because I'm a one. My mother ain't never been on my side ever. My mother on my side only for some what, Terrell? Well, I'm not going to say ever, but you know, my mother never is. Ins- She's on your side when it comes to, yeah, but when it comes to like. She's not entering the conversation on my side. She's going to say, what did you do? Uh-huh. Or what happened? And it's a natural, I think it's a natural black woman thing. It's a woman thing, know? yeah. What happened? Me yeah. and Terrell do not have the mind where we could be like, yeah, you know, I'm not. I'm not fucking with her. Yeah, yeah, she whatever. Yeah, she... A, nah. Nah. My mother gonna be like, yeah, no way. Yeah. We she can't shit on... My mother not one, not one of them ones can't that talk you can crazy talk about, about girls in front of. Nah. She not gonna be the one. She'll call and say, you need to pack your bags and leave my son. <laughs> yeah, my mother that's like... Because yeah. he's doing you dirty. <laughs> I don't... I can't stand... But woman to woman. Yeah. <laughs> My mother calling her a woman to woman. But right, that's look. the but that is the level of uh accountability we was raised on though. What? That's why we moved the way we moved. Yeah. But just, you know what? Just you, to wrap that up, because I was I'm gonna wrap bad. it up. I don't know if you want to say something real quick. I was getting ready to say I could give a, a, a you did a, one thing, you know, I'ma always say I'm a solo trippist. I believe in leaning on your vices, and I think just out of all of the great advice you've given, um, Remember my advice. Lean on your vices and the things that help you escape your reality just for a little while. For me, y'all know me for a long time. I talked about it. It's TV. I watch. Like when I start going through shit, I start to binge a show. I'll rewatch some shit that I love. I will start a new show just to help me escape from the reality of now. I even do it now just because the TL sometimes can be too much. Yeah. You know, 100%. it's just all it's some shit going on. This argument, that argument. The other day I was like, ah, I'm getting to the point now where I start scrolling when I don't want to scroll or I'll get out of that thread when I can, yeah. when I know I can stay in there just because it's not good for me mentally. But, um, but yeah, man, leave me your vices. 100%. Just in there. I appreciate Terrell giving me the, the space to do that. For the people that, like I said, you're not going through anything or you never been through anything like that and had to listen to that. Sorry, I guess. <laughs> Look, Man, that's still a good. Sorry, li- that, yeah, that's that's still a good. You know, but yeah, I think for the people that are going through a breakup or anything like that, last thing that I would just say is that none of this shit is permanent, bro. None of it. Yeah. The worst things that's gonna happen to us in this life, as horrible as they are, they not permanent. I know me and Trey didn't talk much about it, but like, we're starting to kind of see it. Like this school shooting situation, rest in peace to those three, those six people that lost their lives. Yeah. That crazy ass person mm-hmm. that went in that school and did that. But like watching the world become way more sensitive to it, and we just kind of getting used to it. Oh, you mean desensitized? Desensitized? To it. Yeah, mm-hmm. my bad. Desensitized. It just made me realize that damn, like nothing permanent. Even the way that people feel about shit. Yeah. So like. You lost somebody in your life and you feel like they don't love you anymore. You lost somebody and you feel like you might have fucked up because you might have made a mistake. Man, mistakes happen and feelings are not permanent Mm -hmm. unless you do some real petty shit. So, like, quit beating yourself up about situations with people that don't work out the way you wanted them to. Yeah. Because it's not over with. That's why I said it's not permanent. Like, Mm -hmm. and then what I was going to say, too, is don't compare... Your ability to move on fast to other people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, just because you know this person who was in a relationship and they moved on, but why do I still feel? You never know. Like, I was talking to somebody who lost somebody, and it was like, the world just started moving on. Yeah. And I'm still left here mourning type shit, you know? Yeah. Everybody went back to work, started talking about the TL again, and I'm thinking, this is still crazy for me. I just lost my whoever. Yeah. But like you said, that's how the world is. Everybody moves at a very fast pace. And you can't put yourself on hook up for not working. I'm sorry, for not moving at that same pace. I'm going to let him have it. Little bag for the, nah, for yeah. the end. I did want to say one thing. 
out of the darkness. Not, and I'm sorry, not darkness, but out of the the breakup combo about Lamar Jackson. Okay, good. Real quick before we do movie suggestions, what we're seeing with Lamar Jackson is 100% collusion. This shit. Well, this is what I'll say. You know, I'm not, I'm not really gonna go too crazy. This is what I'll say. Lamar Jackson, and this is Terrence. This is the thing too. I want to tell you this. Um. We got to recognize pattern when we see it. And y'all know I don't believe in coincidence. They signed Lamar Jackson to a non-exclusive deal, right? Okay. Remember what we said, non-exclusive. What we start doing, we all start mentioning our favorite teams. He's Mm -hmm. a Falcon. He's a Patriot. He's coming to the Colts, Commanders. Who knows where he about to go? Okay. They signed him to a non-exclusive deal, meaning all you got to do is give us what we want. You know, you can sign him to whatever you want. And mm-hmm. we'll give it all we want in exchange, if we the Ravens, is two picks, two first-round picks. This man is still arguably in his prime. He haven't fallen off. Mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? And was a former unanimous MVP, and yet, all of these teams are coming out that need quarterbacks and saying they don't want Lamar Jackson. The Falcons owner just came out because they're going with Desmond Ritter with their, as their QB this year after they were all in on Deshaun Watson last year trying to get him. And you know what he says? Excuse me. Lamar Jackson, yeah. For somebody that His play injured. style. Mm-hmm. I don't, he's going to get injured. You know, we don't know of his, the longevity with his play style, you know, when it comes to injury. Lamar Jackson has never gotten hurt as a running quarterback. Both of the serious injuries that Lamar Jackson got, he was standing in the pocket. The Ravens didn't protect him. I'm going to say it again. Both of his major injuries, he was standing in the pocket. He wasn't running. So what are you talking about? Atlanta. And on top of that, you got the commanders who's are y'all are in a sales nightmare. So nobody really expected y'all to make a big move because we don't even know if y'all gonna have y'all team. Um, but the Colts, y'all are out on them. You know what I'm saying? All of these different organizations that need a quarterback are out, and the reason for it is because Lamar Jackson wants that money that they gave Deshaun Watson. The Browns really fucked everybody. And the reason why they're colluding with each other is because they don't want Lamar Jackson to reset the QB market. Because guess what? Once he gets guaranteed Once you give money, me that money, mm-hmm. if I'm Joe Burrow and I'm getting ready to resign, Herbert going to resign, Trevor Lawrence going to resign. And now, look, not only do I... Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, well, you're right, because now you got to... Now you're re, you've reset the market. So... And look, now you not only re- reset the market, but now y'all gave Lamar how much guarantee? Right. Okay, so Lamar versus me, how much I'm getting? That's exactly what Lamar's. You know what I'm that's exactly what Lamar's yeah. doing with with the Deshaun, mm-hmm. and uh, all of the owners are colluding together to not do to this. not do it for Lamar because they know it's not even about uh, if you want Lamar or not. It's about the guarantee. It's about the money. Yeah. If I'm an Atlanta Falcons owner and I'm calling the Colts owner, it's 32 of us. Of course, I know all of us. I'm gonna tell you, bro, don't do it. You about to fuck all of us. We might not even be fucking with the Browns uh, owner because he already fucked us all. But don't you fuck us all yeah, like, by doing that shit because then he don't need a quarterback right now. They ain't even in conversation. Exactly. Like, we the ones that's really strong. Like, honestly, I didn't like the fact that the commanders didn't go after Lamar, if I'm being honest. It makes the no sense that y'all didn't go after Lamar. I felt like we could have went after him. I mean, makes no sense. Y'all literally have the perfect team for him. A solid defense that was one of the top units last year. This is where I'm frustrated as a fan. We've watched y'all bring in scrub after scrub, Washington. Scrub after scrub. Scrub after scrub. Paying some. We did the RG3 Kirk Cousins thing for like eight years. But we have never really had a real promising quarterback generation. I remember I looked at the RG3 clip, and they showed RG3 cooking. I'm like, damn, this man, used to, we thought that we had one. They showed a clip of his very first game. His very first, uh, he was seven for seven. His first drive. Mm-hmm. Through an 89-yard pass to, uh, not 89, like a 69-yard pass to, like, Pierre Garçon. Like, he was, like, 8 for 8 to start the game. Bro, we thought he, we thought we had one. He's never been. He, he ended up not being shit. Cousins ended up not being shit. We went through Haskins. We then been through all these people. We brought in Fitzgerald, Alex Smith, just brought in Jacoby Bissett. 
uh, Carson Taylor Wentz. Heineke. Look, Taylor Heineke, Carson Wentz. We've brought in so many quarterbacks, and we've watched y'all pay. We paid $11 million for Fitzgerald. We paid twenty six for Carson's last we year. We paid Kirk Cousins $100 million. We paid millions of dollars for quarterbacks. It's like, oh, y'all draw the line at the former MVP. <laughs> <laughs> We bring, we, you know, we the ones who make the ridiculous move to bring Brian. We brought in Donovan McNabb for like four years, a uh, hundred million dollars. I remember. You know what I'm saying? We are that guy or that team. And it's like, normally I wouldn't want us to do this. But now it's like, you know what? Let's say we did put all of our chips in one basket and paid a whole bunch of money to have Lamar. Flip our team. We just got a brand new team. Right. Like, y'all want to bring in, like I was telling Terrell this, this is the saddest thing ever. We're the Jacoby Brissett team. Mm -hmm. Jacoby Brissett been in the league for a minute. And you know exactly what the Jacoby Brissett team going to do. They going to compete, but... You never know, Terrence. That's what exactly what the Seahawks thought about having Geno. Man, hey, look, I hope I'm wrong, Jacoby. I hope I'm wrong. He I hope gonna, I'm wrong. Y'all going right. to put Sam Howell in for seven games and go one and six and then say Jacoby's warming up. Y'all annoying as shit. You ain't hear what Ron Rivera said? What? Rivera came out and said, he said, Jacoby, we're going we gonna to play Jacoby if he plays better than Hal. He said, if he plays well, if Hal plays well, he can win. But if not, he will be on the bench. <laughs> Rivera, <laughs> Rivera has lost it. Yeah, Rivera is definitely gone. Okay, but I just hate to see Lamar Jackson taking kind of like the heat for all nah, of the future yeah. players. Like, it's way bigger than just his contract. 100%. My movie suggestion of the week is oh, once I again, a couple weeks ago, I recommend that y'all watch The Leftovers. I have finished season one. I just finished season three. Big shout out to whoever the person is. I don't remember who it was that randomly on Twitter under a thread about something completely random said, yo, you should watch The Leftovers on HBO. One of my favorite watches in a long time. Like I watched Severance and Severance was my favorite, one of my favorite like full season watches, but the Leftovers is so special, especially that third season. My goodness. Y'all need to watch it, man. I'm telling you, it came out in 2014. I have no idea how it got swept under the rug, but it's called The Leftovers. It is on HBO. Once you watch that first three episodes, you're going to be, you're going to watch it. Trust me. Come on, y'all. Trust. I'm just telling you. Leftovers, HBO. There's a reason why I'm, this is my second time in at least a month. If, if this is my recommendation. I'm about to tell you, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't keep, you do that, you, you, I feel like you've been doing that a lot. I haven't. This is the first time I've recommended the same thing in a minute. Fuck out of here. They listen to the podcast just with me, and that's not true. You've definitely re-recommended some shit a couple times, Sorry, Y'all don't know if you know that. I haven't. What, name, name it. You re-recommended something just last week, didn't we? Didn't you re-recommend somebody watch something because they won an award? You want, you re-recommended everything, everywhere all at once because they won an award. You re-recommended watching... Breaking Bad one week. Fuck out of here, boy. You do do that. Sometimes motherfuckers need to watch that joint. Okay. And I'm just saying, sometimes you need to come with something new. My movie suggestion of the week. I hate this nigga. <laughs> My movie suggestion of the week is going to be this movie called I See You. I See You? I See You. It is the number one movie on Netflix right now. I had somebody hit me in my mentions and tell me that it was one of the most insane, most creepiest movies that they've seen. They said this movie's an intense ride. I haven't seen it. So this is going to oh, be a movie shit. that I'm going to try to watch with y'all. But if you go on your Netflix, it's funny as shit to see this joint is number one because maybe bro was right. You know what? Shout out, bro, who hit me. You know who you are. This is your movie suggestion of the week this week. Sir. Uh, but I'm going to check it out. Look at the little joint on the front of that. I'm not really fucking with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no. I'm not fucking with. Nah. We might put that on. Remember that? Remember they said if you scroll past. Remember that thing was on the internet? The girl with the big ass eyes and the big mouth, and they say if you see this on the internet, then you'll see her in your in your. Oh uh, yeah, I, remember I, that? I, mm -hmm. I forget what that was. That's what it looked like, y'all. You talking about that drink that was scaring the kids? It was scaring all the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shit, I'm one of the kids. Yeah. Get it, get it. <laughs> but I, damn, we damn. Do I have anything else that I want to talk about? Let's see. We got a quick course of action. If you want to run a quick course of action. Okay, yeah, let's get it. Oh, for real. Yeah. So we're feeling like pod in the day. Okay. Uh, your girl sends you a picture of some flowers with a message that says, 
You're so thoughtful. I love you, heart. But you didn't buy the flowers. What's the next course of action? Damn. I'm going to call her. I'm going to call her and keep it a buck. Okay. First of all, <laughs> that would, that, damn. I, I would call and keep it a buck. I didn't get these. I'm not going to do what some people would do and say, you welcome, bae. Love you, too. Don't do it. It's a trap. Mm-hmm. It's a trap. Don't, don't do, do it. it. I'm going to call and be like, yeah, I did not get you them flowers. I don't know who gave them to you. What the fuck does the card say? Because who, who's, who's playing with me now? That's at this my point? thing. I got to. Before I say I didn't get them, I'm going to just ask a whole bunch of questions about how you got. Oh, what had everybody buddy brought it to your job? Or you just had to go pick them up? Or they ain't had no card with it? And look, she think you got it. So she like, mm-mm, no card. Mm-mm, yep, outside. <laughs> look, she happy <laughs> as fuck. Them shits did not come from me. And we getting ready to have a fucking problem. Who right. was at work today? Now I'm on the way up to work. And I know it was Melvin. And I seen him looking at her. <laughs> like, she don't even know the stories that I'm building in my head. It's like, nah. But for real, yeah. I'm definitely on Terrell's wave. I'm not going to say shit about, oh, yeah, you know, that's from me. You know, I look out for you, boo. You know, I look out for you. It's a nah. trap. Don't do it. Trap. If you want to do one more? Mm -hmm. You come out of a building and so does another guy. And this is for my fellas. And ladies, maybe. You come out of a building and so does someone else. Sorry, I'm lying. We start this over. My bad. <laughs> you come out of a building and somebody is entering the building. Okay. So when you're coming out, they're entering. And mm. y'all are headed face to face for each other. I go right? through that every night in my complex. 100%. Next course That long action. ass hallway. Mm -hmm. And you see somebody coming. Course of action. What's your next course? I always look forward, but not at them, but down at the ground, like almost at my steps. And then when I get close, I'll nod. If they nod. Yeah. Sometimes people look, they just walk past you and don't say shit. Yeah. I'll tell you this. I'm looking at you 100% the entire way. Damn, that's creepy as fuck. No, nah, look. No, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm looking at you 100% to see if you acknowledge me. Like, I'm going <gasps> to... I'm not going to walk and be looking oh, at you. Oh, that's what I thought you meant. You're going to be looking at the motherfucker oh, nah. the whole way. I'm going to, but I'm, I know for a fact I'm, I'm focused on me acknowledging that you're a human being. Uh -huh. Do you want to know why? I think about movie shit. One of my favorite movies ever. Oh, you know what? I need to go and make that my fucking movie suggestion of the week. What? Keep I'm it. Not, I'm, no, I'm not going to say it. I'm going to just say it. I'm not going to say it. One of my favorite movies. This is why I think this way. I'm like, what if I see this person later? Because the hotel, like, let's say I'm in a hotel and I'm walking and I see somebody. I'm 100% looking to be like, hey, yo, what's up, man? Hey, what's up? If we down by the, I definitely, I try to be real friendly because I'm like, if something happens, I want to get past the what's up small shit. If they got, look, let's say you go upstairs and everybody's standing outside. I'm going right to the dude I said what's up to and say, yo, what's up, man? What's going on? You know? <laughs> I need to be able to say I know somebody up in there. But yeah. I told Terrell, we go through that all the time, though. You do have to read, though. Facts. I'm looking at you the way you coming out. If somebody's coming out of a building, like I see somebody coming out of the gym, you know, you just came out of the gym, so you know you could be feeling yourself. You got your nuts in your hand. You walking with your nuts. You grab your nuts, right? And I'm like, okay, this nigga think, you know, whatever. That It could be that situation. But for the most part, I'm going to speak. I'm a nice guy. Hey, what up, bro? Hey, what's up, man? I'm going to tell you enjoy your workout. I'm going to tell you, hey, yo. I hope you get what you what you looking for. Hey, I hope y'all have a good one. And I don't even know none of y'all. Especially if it's somewhere that's kind of like jolly like home. Yeah, what you getting ready to say about that? Nothing. I was randomly just going to say that the people that told me that Interstellar was better than Inception when they really remade the Penrose staircase and re really turned that hallway. Come on, bro. What was better than Inception? Interstellar. They did a lot of really did. They really did. They did, but too. this motherfucker was in a green screen room. No, no. You know that joint that's going around? Yeah. I got a course of action for you. Go ahead. Your girl telling you a story about work, right? Yeah. And I hate that they always be like, your girl, your girl, your girl. Your significant other is telling you a story about work, right? And she says, yeah, so, you know, I went to me and uh, Roger went to lunch, and we were just talking about how it's crazy out there. <laughs> Keep going. And so, like, they stressing me out. And so we just went over to the Chick-fil-A, me and Roger, and we just had lunch. What you going to do? 
<laughs> That's just it. You're not even gonna say what happened. We got luck. No, I mean luck. Back, it was just like so busy. Your like, girl telling you a story and you find out that she been going to lunch with a nigga. It could be completely platonic. This is the type of friendship. nigga y'all. Uh, this is the type of nigga I am. I'm gonna y'all get ready to see. This is exactly the type of nigga I am. I'm not. I don't have no type of pump fake. I don't have no type of break or uh. Hold no on. has he? I don't got no type of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right at you. You right in. Soon as you say, yeah. So I went. I went to. I'm at work and I went to lunch with Roger and I'm gonna say, oh, you and Roger went to lunch. It's a wrap from there. You uh, you have to talk about that shit. Uh, right? yeah, my coworker. Uh, yeah, my coworker. Oh, where y'all went? Chick Fil A. Y'all went to Chick Fil A. Uh, he got a milkshake for you. <laughs> That's the type of nigga that I am. Because you know damn well you tripping. Oh, you went to you went to Chick Fil A with brother. He get a milkshake for you. Got you the cookie, the brownie, something something sweet, huh? Yeah, had a real long conversation. Y'all see y'all parked in the uh, curbside parking lot, huh? Fuck out of here with y'all going to it lunch for your lunch break. Ha- they gonna say, look, it didn't happen like that. We he brought my food back. Yeah, we doing that. I don't give a damn. What's his name? <laughs> I'm up there looking at everybody's name tag. I'm emailing his ass. They don't even know who I am. Not you. <laughs> Not you. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Chick-fil-A, right? Let me talk to you real quick. <laughs> <laughs> one last one. Uh, come on, I got a headache. One last one. You stop dating a you stop dating a girl, right? We just talked about breakup. Uh-huh. Right? You get you sitting there, you getting the cut. Yeah, 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 bro, what you been up to, yeah, 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 you know, man, your baba said, yeah, you know, I've been trying to just fucking with this new girl, she lived down so-and-so, <laughs> and you were like, oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, where you meet her at, yeah, you know, she work at this so-and-so boss, so, and you like, that's the boss, you great guy, <laughs> and you like, oh, okay, yeah, so, you know, you know, what y'all love, what y'all be up to? You know, she like going down to this little dance joint. So, you know, I'd be going down, you know, we be dancing. I'm going down there dance with her. And you know, that's what your girl is. So, you know, this, this is point, for sure her. This is shock for sure. Bar. Dance studio. Yeah, but the shock bar at the dance studio. He know where she live right off. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Basically, long story short, you're now getting your hair cut. I'm in a vulnerable position. <laughs> this nigga can clutch me with the clipper. You're halfway through your cut. What's your next course of action? Because, look, I'm going to add some <laughs> Do spice you, to it. Okay. You got shit that you dealing with, right? You got shit that you got to deal with now, right? Meaning? Because he done told you this, and now you have to make a, you have, now, look, now there's a couple things you can do. Let's say you sit there, and you just continue to get the cut, because, you know, this is my man. This is my barber fucking ass. No, you can't do look, that. Look, it ain't a big deal. I wasn't even that attached to shorty. He cutting your hair. Now little shit starts sticking out to you. Look, y'all watching the movie. It's the barber shop, right? Look, your barba not saying shit. The TV, this, somebody on the TV, some guy on the TV. I just fucked the shit out of that bitch. Like, that shit was crazy. Look, your barba, ha! <laughs> Finish cutting your head. Now you sitting there like, what the fuck? And he's so funny <laughs> about that. <laughs> Who is he thinking Dad, about? This Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is he thinking about? Look, I'm getting my fade on this side now. Right? <laughs> now, look. This nigga's doing my shape up. Now I'm looking this nigga right in his grill because I'm thinking, like, this is freaky, some freaky nasty shit. I'm like, that's how close she be to this nigga. She be in this nigga's face. What the fuck do she see so great about this? He's not that handsome, of course. <laughs> look, and look, this your barber. So now you're like, fuck, I forgot it. This is my boy. This is my man right here. Let me stop thinking. This nigga's doing your haircut. You looking around. He's doing your shape up. <laughs> this nigga smell this good. This nigga smell. You think about this nigga smell. He said, hold on, wait, bro. Real quick, give me a second. Let me answer this. He outside and look, you see this nigga outside like. <laughs> you sitting look, there with the. You can't right, turn. You sitting there with the ball cut. Look. You can't turn yourself <laughs> in the chair. So you sitting there like this on the side. <laughs> you can't even turn yourself. So you sitting there <laughs> with the tape on your neck looking back like this. <laughs> Dance. <laughs> you looking real sharp about your neck. Look. You, he looked back in. Look, Terrence. Oh, my God. <laughs> he looked back in there, so now you're looking for <laughs> <laughs> You just got to <laughs> in the gate. Look, this nigga come back. You like, yeah, so what was that? That was some business shit. That was some business. And look, he like, look, 
bitches. You know, these bitches. I told you I just talked to this new bitch. This and you like, bitch. watch your fucking mouth. That's crazy. But yeah. Oh, oh my man. goodness. Terrence, what you have to do, as soon as this nigga starts to, as soon as shit starts to click for you, as soon as you start putting it together, do you remember when DJ Khaled was drinking that wine and he just yeah. stood up? <laughs> so, yeah, you, you got to do that out the chair. Just stand up out the chair. I got the apron on. I got the now I'm not in a vulnerable position no more. He yeah. can't just rock me with the uh, <laughs> No, see, the, my, my, the bad thing is, my thing is, you need to get your cut finished. You halfway through a cut. He done um, already runch, runch, runch you up with the, with the, yeah. with the, uh. Yeah, he scooting you, you up and now the, you feel vulnerable because he doing you how yeah. he be doing you, girl. You a foot and a half off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> now he pumping you up. <laughs> no, this ain't how he be. Yeah. Oh, we, we gotta get out of here, Oh, bro. man. Now nah, you just made my headache way Hold worse. On, wait, no, look. To end that all, all you have to do, bro, is get your cut, leave, never get another cut again. Never come That's back. It. Change the number, block the nigga. You just gonna tell him I fuck with what you do, you cool. But uh, let me go to the what's the name drop because I don't feel like I have to play the drop. This nigga Toretto's not have to drop. I don't know what he's doing, but yeah, man. Episode 145. Uh, <laughs> I felt like it was a long one. I felt like this one was a little, you know. This Jesus one went a little. Christ. Christ. We did? No, you're not dead, fool. Oh, here we go. This one was hilarious. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. Turn up. Yes, sir. Uh, hey, look. I got something for y'all this weekend. This next pod, y'all going to, y'all see. This nigga played the drop at the lowest volume he could play it. That's fine. I'm about to say, come on. Turn me up. Cody, turn me up.